I caught myself this time. Hello everyone and welcome to Great Train Layouts Live where we are constructing before your very eyes track plans for a variety of different scales and seeing how they could come to life through the power of pre-visualization in Train Z Railroad Simulator 19. And it is great to be back with you guys once again. I always feel like it's so long. I, I know it's only a month, but it's like, man, it feels like ages since I saw you guys. Hope you're doing well. Leave a comment. Tell me what you've been up to. It's so much fun to be here with you. And this, I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you. Well, I can. I'll try. I am going to try to tell you how excited I am for tonight's build. Because tonight, in honor of the late, great Ian Rice, we are building the Lolita and Mad River Railroad. This is a 4x8 track plan that, frankly, uh, I think is unlike just about any other 4x8 out there. I always say, don't hate the 4x8. I always say that. But this in particular, I feel like, has the opportunity to be a definitive creative statement uh, for whoever wants to tackle it as a, an actual three-dimensional layout. It's going to be a bit challenging even in the sim. We are paying tribute to Ian Rice. He passed away on October 8th of this year, 2022. And, I mean, for me, I think of all of his colorful illustrations. And, and you can see that track plan in the lower right. I, so we've, we're going to have the build, but that way. Um, there's a link in the description that shows a number of his track plans, including this one. Uh, and he just... He clearly had the vision and he was taking it that next step to what it could be because he would draw these really beautiful uh, illustrated maps. Uh, but he'd also do uh, a three-dimensional view as well so you could get a sense of what it was going to look like if you actually built it. And I think that that goes a long way to saying this is what it's going to be. Um, and this one, I mean, we've got, we've got schooners, we've got... Uh, fishing vessels. We've got uh, a very interesting track arrangement. We got not one, but two harbors. There are some folks that say that this track plan is flat out impossible. And I mean, maybe I've over exaggerated a bit. I've, I've read a, a number of posts online, different forms talking about this very plan and people citing some of the challenges with it. I'm not saying that it won't be challenging, but I want to see if we could crack the code to what it would take to make this layout to work. Because I can already see some of the challenges we're going to have in advance. But who doesn't like a good challenge, right? So we're going to get to it, and I am so happy to have you along for the ride. So, first thing we're going to get doing is we're going to lay some track. This is uh, 1900, so we're going to go with some probably 100-pound rail. Don't want anything too heavy obviously again if one was building this you'd be building this with code 70 or code 83 but uh with train z we are building it um one to one and as a result we're we're using actual scale whale rate with yeah rail weights Ugh, that proved to be more challenging hey railroad guy love your pumpkin emojis or jack-o-lantern emojis i hope you guys are having a fun festive season I, I guess yeah we should kind of sort of make this somewhat uh holiday themed uh i don't know we're, we're kind of having we're, we're gonna be having fun i, I put together a, a playlist of seaside music that'll be keeping us company in the background you can tell me if it's uh too right now it looks like it might be too soft so i'm gonna increase that a bit um but if it gets too loud just uh let me know Just thought it'd be nice to have something atmospheric because, man, who doesn't love the seaside? I, I, I think of all those great sets in uh, the model era of Thomas the Tank Engine um, that would take place at the harbor, especially season three. And there's just an endless source of creative possibilities Um when it comes to whether you're just ha going by the sea or it's a background element or uh, in this case, we've got two arbors and we're going to have a big, big scooter. That part comes a bit later. Um, 
And we're going to go to town on, on super detail in this as much as we can. Uh, but this might be a two-week or uh, two-month build. Uh, we'll see. It all depends on if you guys are enjoying it, if you guys feel like, yeah, there's more to, to learn by revisiting and so forth. Um, so for those who are new to Great Train Layouts Live, well, welcome. Great to have you aboard. I'm Nick, your host and layout designer uh, or pre-visualization artist. We'll go with that because... I didn't actually design this track plan. Um, I had somebody ask me online, how how does one go about using TrainZ as a design software? Uh, in the sense that he he purchased himself a copy and he was kind of trying to understand it a bit better. Um, and so I pointed him in the direction of base maps. So first step to doing a train layout design. I never show this because it's a bunch of different program windows and it's not really exciting, but you take the pro, you, there's a program called base maps. You load in a JPEG of your track plan. You enter the dimension. So in this case, eight feet wide, four feet high, or long, however you want to describe it. And X is, no, this is Y. Y would be four feet and X is eight feet. So you enter the dimensions, it automatically generates the layout file uh, that then you can open in TrainZ, and that's what we started with. Now, because of this method of uh, pre-visualization, I always like to show this example. So TrainZ gives you the world's most flexible flex track, which is great from a standpoint of it allows you to do whatever you want, but it also means that if you're going to place rolling stock in there, it may or may not work, but in Train Z, it would allow you to drive this boxcar around these impossibly tight turns. So you can't... Now, you do have rulers that you can use in the game, and right now it's set to metric and it's set to real scale, but you could change the... You could change it to imperial and you could change the scale. We're not going to be using the rulers much because we are going to be trying to just go off of the dimensions that are here in game um, in this case. But the point is that if you're wanting to design the plan, I, I'm i a proponent of starting with oh any rail or pen and paper or just something that's going to allow you to get accurate dimensions um, so you know that it's physically possible, that you know that your curve radiuses or radii are within tolerance of what you're constructing um that's that's the first place to start and then I import into the sim could you just design the track plan in the sim itself yes presuming that you don't need to worry about uh specific tight tolerances or whether a curve's going to be too sharp or too loose so for example this layout uh, behind me um, in my office here, which is going to be the dinner train, uh, the, well, what is it called? The dinner bell. Yes. Uh, the dinner bell. It's going to be a dinner train themed layout. And I've started to, I'm actually using train Z to do some of the pre-visualization for it. In that case, it's not going to be a circular layout. It's going to be a point to point. So I'm not worried about, um, uh, what am I not worried about? I'm not worried about... Well, I'm not worried about a lot of this. <laughs> what am I not worried about? I'm not worried about whether curves are going to work or not. Um, that's not the concern with this design. Um, because it's it's just going to be point to point. So curves are going to be really easy. Um, and if I need to shore things up, I'll do so in any rail. But the point is that if you are using TrainZ to design, just be mindful that... You want something to double check that the grades, the grades that you're putting in and the curve radii that you're putting in are actually physically possible for your space. Start with that and then uh, start with some method of ensuring that, then come into the sim and you can play around with it there. In this case, this is definitely one in which we are going to be taking... It is a plan that should be physically possible, 
but these curves are going to be tight. I think they come to around... The tightest ones are here. And they come to, I believe, 16 and a half inch radius. So they are tight. And that's going to be reflected in our choice of mode of power, which I'm very eager to show off uh, during our playtime at the end of the show today. I'm going with a cinder ballast. I might change this to rock. A lot of this is actually going to get... Um, yeah, yeah, maybe we do want to go with a dirty gray. Okay, let's replace that. Another thing that I love... One of the many things I love of doing this pre-visualization in Trains with a Z is the fact that it's so easy to just change track types. So you want to see... Right now you can see what it looks like with cinder ballast. I like it. But I, I think that we're going to have such kind of rocky areas that I want to use the dirty gray. Actually, I'm going to probably want to use the dirty gray terrain because that's going to give us a little bit of a... Um, a little bit more spill to not have the kind of floating track syndrome. You will see what that looks like once we get to the elevations part, which we're not too far away of. So, we need a bridge. Um... We need a bridge uh, to get uh, to cross the gap of the harbor, and we want it to be something. Trestle would be lovely, but trestle is going to have um, is going to hang have bits under the bridge, for lack of a better word. Uh, it, its support structure is going to be underneath. We want to create some kind of truss, something that's going to be overhead and. But I don't want it to be steel. I want to see if I have a wood truss bridge. Um, kind of not steel and definitely not double track. Because, um, like, this is a nice bridge. But it looks a little bit too robust for what we're going for. Um, like, this is a nice deck plate. This is a lovely bridge. And it, there's no reason it couldn't be used other than... If you're trying to maintain the idea that you could have these ships with their tall masts going in and out of the fishing harbor, it it kind of it works against the the belief of that. Um, that said, there's definitely a lot that one has to take with a sort of to believe in in the nature of the plan because. It, uh, let me see, I'm gonna be looking for, where did I put that trestle? Because there's already, th there's certain liberties it takes with, uh, the reality of, oh, there it is. That's, yep, that's one of the ones I wanted to use. That's the other one. Perfect. Okay. Um, so for instance, we're gonna have this big schooner here, and you'll notice that it would technically squeeze out from side to side if we go with that as the, the boundaries of the landscape. Uh, but there's no way the water's going to be deep enough for it. So part of the impossibility that we're trying to conquer tonight is can we, can we make it look convincing enough as a scene that that doesn't matter? That you're not looking at it and thinking overtly, oh, well, that really doesn't look... <laughs> convincing you you the goal is to try to take something that would really be so much bigger if you were doing it for a one-to-one -one scale and just can we make it believable and really have fun with the seaside theme and really make the most of of just getting the atmosphere this is a the reason i've been looking forward to this so much because i love what we're going to be able to do with it being the seaside. I think it's just going to be fun. And I want the spirit. I want I want to look at the, this layout and smell the salt air. I want you to be watching along with this and be like, yep, I smell the barnacles. I think it's barnacles that have a scent. You can tell that I did not grow up around the sea. Ah, so we're going to hook in the track to here. Um, so we're, tr we're going to do this pretty much as true to his plan as we can. I'm, I'm going to be trying to make as few, uh, changes in the design as possible. Um, 
largely just to pay tribute to him and and his uh skill as a designer but also because i i want to see what it looks like so for example this is going to be a coal dock right here uh this right here uh coal or ore i think we're going with actually no limestone uh is what we're going for for this build uh i forget what the i think the plan describes it as a coal dock and looking at it, it, it's it's like, do I really want it there? Because operationally, it means you have to bring your cars down and then just shove those cars up because there's no way that you can keep them par parked on this hill. Do I want that? And I thought, well, I don't know if I would do it, but I want to see what it looks like. I want to, it's a benefit of the doubt. Let's see what it looks like if we do it true to form. So we are not taking any liberties as far as ad adapting things one way this is a, a true one-to-one -one, if you could describe model railroading as one-to-one -one, uh take on his plan partially because we don't have to worry about well can rolling stock actually turn around this and is it going to be a problem that the couplers line up or don't line up on these curves i mean these are things that if you are if if you're working on a real track plane you do have to be worried about that and this sim is not going to tell you necessarily oh you should be worried about whether you're going to couple cars because it will just do it but i think i always maintain yes it can tell you if a thing fits but its greatest asset is just does it look cool does it play well and in particular i'm so excited to play with this I, I I've been so tempted. I can't tell you guys how tempted I've been to um to cheat and to like start doing it and start doing little bits. And obviously I've played around a bit. I've got this pick list here. We've got some cool boats and some bridges and some buildings um to kind of get us going. Because you know me, I don't want to tie up your time with having to go shopping. I'm already fearful that I'm gonna have to go shopping for a for a proper um uh, wooden bridge. Um, I think if I go with a, is it a how? There we go. I'm not 100%, oh, except it's narrow gauge. But I can standard gauge it. Um, maybe that's what we'll go with. Or is this the, no, that's also narrow gauge. Though it looks cool. Oh, and what else we got? Okay, that one hangs underneath. But, ah, both of those are nifty. Um, I think we're gonna go with open. Um. I think I like the the open style bridge, and I think it's wide. It's built for narrow gauge stock, but I think it's wide enough that if we lay standard gauge track through it, it's not going. Oh yeah, that'll fit standard gauge stock. So that's what we're going to do. This th this is what I want, and if it's not what I want, I'll change it off camera. <laughs> All right, guys. Ah, uh, how is your Halloween season going? Do you know what you're going to dress up as for Halloween? If you're going to dress up as anything. Um, I did contemplate doing a pirate this year. Actually, the thought I just had today, I'm not going to do it because I don't have enough time to grab the, the costuming bits I need, but I did think some year I gotta, I, I need to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. The facial hair, I got the facial hair. Hmm. Hopefully I'm stocked with enough water this time. I know I'm chatty, but I'm in a particularly chatty mood today, so to your benefit, I hope. We're living and we're learning. And we're gonna have some fun. Okay, I think I think that is all the track covered. So let's just take a look and see what that looks like. So this is the the 2D representation in the sim of what all our track looks like when we've got actual switches and turnouts and the like in there. Obviously, we don't have our grades yet. That's coming next. Fortunately, most of this is just going to be flat, 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 flat. Um, and so we're going to carve into our digital terrain to be making our grades. Um, Part of why I chose this plan is I did not want to have to deal with crazy grade transitions. If you tuned in last month with the Sandy Fork Lumber Company, you know that we were spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to make some crazy uh, 
some crazy switchbacks work and uh I I did not want to have that kind of fun today. Today we've got A grade. And admittedly, it's going to present a challenge, but not in terms of actually putting it into the sim. It's going to present a challenge by way of how we view the layout. And we'll get to that in a bit. So we do have some markers to indicate what the grade should look like. And it is going to be a steepy steepy. It is going to be steep. Um, so we've got a one, one inch marker here that tells us we need to be one inch above the ground. So, uh, converting that to real scale metric, that's a factor of 2.2. Um, can I put a track marker there and then delete that one and get a smoother curve? Eh, yeah, that'll work. Ish. I might need to finesse that one. I don't know how smooth the curve is in terms of how it was actually drawn. So we're going to be... Because this feels pretty tight here and then it really loosens up. I'm going to try to have it a bit more even throughout. Um, without trying to take away from our channel here. We want to we wanna help the channel grow. And if you want to help the channel grow, you can go to patreon.com slash the roundhouse. And for as little as a dollar a month, you're supporting the creative endeavors that we get to do on Great Train Layouts Live, the Roundhouse podcast, what makes this layout great. And come on, I just gave you a really killer transition into that uh, that ad drop. So if you're not already subscribed on Patreon, just a dollar a month. Uh, you, and for those of you who love these Train Z builds, you get early access to the layouts before they're publicly released. So right now, um, the the Commonwealth Railway, which we was our second live build, is available for download only on Patreon. So you should totally check that out. So, yes, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for permitting me for that. Uh, I was pretty happy about that channel growth thing. Please tell me if you liked helping the channel grow. <laughs> okay, so we get so uh, converting by a factor of two point two. So we're gonna. Give that a height value of 2.2 and we're going to apply that and then um and it is starting from zero down here so it's zero to this 2.2 and then we want to apply and i delete that and get it to look okay ish i mean you one can see where it's it's kind of lopsided but we're going to use this just for trying to get the grade values right so 4.4 is our grade there and that tells us and this is one of the reasons that i love uh train z that our grade value is four point it's it's roughly around 4.45 percent for this section and 4.08 steep this is a steep grade, which it needs to be again not if if you just needed to cross over the tracks then you could go with a reduced grade and that might be one way in which you adapt the plan but we're trying to go the full distance. We're going the full Monty. We're going up to a staggering height of 3.5 inches in a very short amount of time. Uh, Railroad Guy remembers me from Brian's uh, San Juan Branch Line series. Uh, I have that perfect voice. Well, thank you. I'm glad you think I have the perfect voice. At least the, the perfect voice for Frank. The, uh, the Frisco um, 1522 character. Uh, which I have fun voicing. I, I do enjoy voicing Frank. It, it's the kind of thing that um, a couple years pass and then I get a message from my buddy John who says, Hey, <laughs> you mind voicing Frank again? And I'm like, sure, I'll go for it. Absolutely. Um, and it's always at music because I'll, I'll meet people who know me from at the rail yard, I'll, I'll people who, who know me from what makes this layout great. Uh, the podcast, but um, it's amusing when people are like, oh, no, 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 I know you from uh, from San Juan Trains. Uh, which, it's amusing. I, I like the, <laughs> I like to be known from a variety of different things. Uh, Bear Fox Try, remember watching your videos of add-ons like uh, Cab Forward videos, good to see and hear your voice, bring back memories of the old MSTS board days. Yeah, I mean... Not gonna lie, I, I get 
<laughs> I get nostalgic for the, I don't want to say the good old days, because these days are good too. And honestly, I'm doing things today, I'm doing many things today that I could have never imagined I'd do back in the days of At The Rail Yard. I mean, with my, with my day work with Streamliner Media, um, I'm, I'm getting to make films uh, involving real railroads, uh, whether they be tourist railroads like the Mount Rainier Scenic Railroad. I don't know if any of you saw the the trailer, the launch trailer for that, but that was I edited that together. Um, the East Broadtop trailer that I did a couple of years ago. Uh, need to grab the height off of that um that that is that that is a significant portion of the work that i do through streamliner media and i feel very fortunate that i get to do that so these days are good too but yes uh, do i i look back fondly on the days of doing uh at the rail yard yes there i think partially because i mean that was that was high school that was college that was and there is that kind of, oh, simpler time kind of um, mentality that, that goes with that. Um, but I'm really... Oh, I don't want to do that type of track there. I want to do a trestle track for that. Um, or... Trestle... No, I want to do... Uh, actually, I think I want to do rails only because it has ties. SG100 rails only. Perfect. Um, but yes. Uh, point is, times were good back then. Times are good now. And I learned a lot from doing that at the rail yard. I learned a lot. I, it was a great means of getting to the, the initial steps of finding my creative voice that now I get to exercise in so many different ways. Oh, that's a trestle too. Don't know. That's going to go over a bridge. Oh, maybe we'll do the closed version for that bridge then. In which case we'll need to put a track marker here. I mean, fortunately, this is kind of a eh, turn of the century line. It, it not it does not have to be pristine smooth curve mainline kind of stuff so uh something where did i get my math right 2.2 oh because i've got yeah this is way too high up i we do um so what i wanted to okay what i want to do is i want to start that four percent grade ah i forgot to put a negative when i was going down so 4% down, and then taking the height of this at 5.2. There we go. That's what I wanted. I'm like, that does not look right. I'm sure you guys were yelling at me through the screen. Nick, you done goofied. And yes, I done goofied on that. Hope you're appreciating the music today. Uh, I really wanted to do sea shanties. I wanted to do sea shanties but uh the service that i used to license my music the, the their library did not have any sea shanties i was so bummed by that like oh not not any not a single sea shanty in there uh so um i do take requests if you want to uh i can do a killer rendition of uh wellerman uh I'll save I'll save the sea shanty for when we put the boat up. It'll be a nice presentational moment, shall we say? We'll we'll save it for that. Uh, okay, that looks about right. I mean, I could probably make this a bit. The his illustration, which you can see in the PDF that's linked in the description of uh, of this, has the trestle a bit lower. And I, I want that. So I think what we're going to end up doing is where there's this sort of natural change in the curve. We're just going to add two. Um, no, that's what I wanted. Um, we're going to add these two spline points. So that way I've got this straight section of track and what that is. 
not. Why is something looking more? That's not quite. Something's looking off about that. But that might. Eh, well, we'll say it's intentional. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to have it go flat here. So that way it's a bit lower. So that way it's kind of highlighting the grade a little bit more. And the way that we can tell if the grade is, is properly smooth is whether the, um, the switches, you see how if the switch is lined correctly, we get the frog um, and the side rails. That's our, our way of kind of telling if we got the grade right going into this. So we just kind of have to lower it little by little. So some grade work to do, but not as much and not as headache inducing as it was last time. This is it's substantially easier than what we had to face last time. So that is, I'm happy with that. Um, that's fascinating. Let's change that to 7.7 .7 and apply it to that spline point. There we go. Okay. It still looks a little rough around that, but we'll figure that out once we get to that part of the scene. So if we turn off the base layer, uh, uh, Road Burner Productions, is this trains with a Z? Yes, this is trains with a Z. Uh, if we are look at it, this is the track plan in a three-dimensional form. And this is another benefit of pre-visualizing is even here, we can see what these grades look like. And we can see what the height difference looks like. And I'm going to tease a little bit of what we're going to get into challenge-wise. So one of the reasons why people say the plan is impossible is because... The way that Ian writes about it, his idea for it is that you should only be able to view the layout from the front and from this side. In his version, these two tracks are staging that are hidden by a wall here. And this is a cassette that you can take or just a staging area where you can take and remove trains. That is how he envisioned it. The problem with that... Um, now, that wouldn't necessarily be a problem in and of itself, although one could question whether um, it would be great to have... Well, the switches aren't invisible, but this one would kind of be hidden. But the bigger thing is he writes that it should be at eye level, that all of this should be viewable... That you should be looking at the layout, not top down, but looking at it from the side. Which is great when you're looking at the layout from here. But once you get into this area, now you've got this, the track itself is serving as a barrier. As a visual barrier um, to the detail we have here and we are going to put detail in here we've got this whole other harbor that's going to have some smaller boats so we i think that what we're going to end up doing is we're going to make it so that the layout would be visible along three walls which starts to defeat the purpose of it being a four by eight to an extent but if we can make the staging look like it belongs in the scene that we're creating here, then you can view it at eye level. And you can see all the this scenery at track level. Which would be nice. That's... Excuse me. That is the one of the impossibilities. We've already conquered one, which is the curve. Some people have said, oh, the curves are too tight. Well, again, the curves are 16.5. They are tight but not impossible especially if you have the right motive power i'm going to give you a bit of a teaser tonight we are going to get to be playing with buttercup buttercup is an 042 oscillating cylinder steam locomotive built by my buddy mike uh this is a payware item available at trains forge uh mike is, has the the uh 
is the creator of the Ubqua River Railroad and Navigation Company. And he has a whole fictional backstory on it, and this is baby. So I reached out to him, and I said, Mike, could, uh, can, can we make this layout work with your rolling stock? Can, can we kind of mesh the two? And he, he was totally on board with it. So thanks for sending me the engine, Mike. Uh, I, you can find it at trains with a Z hyphen forge dot com. Uh, but we're going to get into more about that later. Point is, you can tell from it being an 042 that this should have no problem with tight curves. And we're going to have a lot of short cars, short wheelbase stuff because this is uh, turn of the century. I mean, I almost debated using some Lincoln pin stuff here. So, with the track in place, with the um, with the grades in place, time to get to some scenery. Um, Squiggy points out that if uh, well, I'm gonna respond to Squiggy in a moment. Uh, what do you want to see me detail first? Uh, you want to get to the big ship and uh, do the the um, the wharf along here? Do you want me to work on the back where we've got the the kind of fishery? Uh, warehouse type uh, structures or do you want me to work on the hill and coming uh, to this trestle area or this curve what do you want to see first throw throw a comment out there while I'm waiting on those to trickle in Squiggy says I could imagine having difficulty with reaching over to the far side of the layout if it's eye level yes that to me is also a, a part of the the challenge uh, what I would tweak without tweaking the track is that, yes, you could put remote gun couplers and you could put switches, but this is a pretty switching intense layout. I feel like just leaving it up to remote coupler, uncouplers alone might be a bit much. Uh, so I think that just we don't have to make it accessible from all sides. This could be blocked. This could be against a wall here just have a removable cassette or just have a way of driving like maybe even putting a cassette off the end this way a multitude of ways to go about that um so um uh, how about an interchange with a class one um a railroad guy i think you should leave the vests the uh, vets the vets for last what's the vets um Interchange with a class one. Well, Ian did draw up how this would, the rest of the railroad would look because this is a railroad that's primarily logging. So it's hauling uh, timber products to uh, be shipped out because this is a uh, Pacific on the Pacific coast. Um, but we are just doing it as a four by eight. And that's going to give us a lot to work with as it is. Um, Adirondack car and foundry. Uh, Chris, uh, hey, Chris. Uh, what are the overall dimensions? This is a classic 4x8. Well, I say classic in the sense that classic dimensions, uh, very uh, original design by, of course, the late, great Ian Rice. Uh, you know, uh, what do I want to do? For, well, let's, let's do a little bit of landscaping. Let's just get some basic landscaping in just to give us a little bit of sense of where we're going. And that basic landscaping, we're just going to... Uh, start to mark where the water is going to go and stuff like that. Not getting too precise about it at this stage. This landscaping here, I, I, I'm pointing up. <laughs> well, actually, it kind of is up for you guys. So this track, you can see why I went with this style of it that gives us the rock wall because we're going to enhance that look with some other assets. Um, in fact, we might actually not raise the ground here at all. We might entirely raise this with with scenery elements so yeah there, there's going to be a lot we could do because i'm already thinking about questions about well do we do a stone retaining wall or do we let it slide down here i think that we might end up doing some stone retaining walls to really try to maximize the width again no ship would actually be able to probably go out this way or to fit through here for the size ships that we're going to be having but it's about suspending disbelief a little bit 
and, and giving ourselves the opportunity to have the big, um, the big schooner. Um, all right. So, oh, so many opportunities. Like, where do I want to start? Um, uh, well, let's, let's start with some buildings first and foremost. I feel like see where that takes us initially now we put the design back on we could see where we're going to run from a trainsy standpoint into a bit of a challenge and that is buildings that we could squeeze in between these two tr staging tracks and this visible um fisherman's wharf side track um this building over here what is that building i'm gonna need to look that um, because I don't have the full track plan in front of me that has, um, that has that marked. I think it's just a warehouse. I'm going to say this is a, like a warehouse for, because you figure the, they unload the fish, the fish would go right into the warehouse because this is before mechanical refrigeration. You'd have ice, ergo, yeah, that, that makes sense as a warehouse. And I could probably find a small warehouse pretty easily, but now... Finding buildings that are going to be that small. Mm. And that might change the track a wee bit. Not a ton. We're still... The fabric of it is the same. Just a wee bit of room to, to fit some buildings in there. Let's look at some of the buildings that we get to have fun with. Um, potentially, depending on if they actually fit. See, some of the stuff I, I have looks cool. Like, this looks awesome. But does it fit? Uh, no. Pity. I I really like that a lot. Yeah, one to save for another time. That's why I I did some shopping in advance and trying to figure out okay what's actually going to fit here. Um, well th here's an easy one we could do the engine house. This is the engine house. So that is a that at least is an easy one to grab for. Um, which looks pretty. It actually fits the footprint pretty closely to the design. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, a little crane for loading coal. Yeah, we'll probably put that over here. Um, the river slug. Oh, yeah. Fisherman's Wharf. This is another group of buildings, and I love it. And you figure that if you were modeling these, then yeah, you could make them uh, low relief and therefore not as thick. I might even, well, this wouldn't work because of where the bait shop is anyway. I might end up tweaking this a little bit and pushing this track out just to give ourselves room for some buildings. We'll see. But that one isn't going to work anyway. The lobster company. Ah, now this is going to work someplace. I think it has a wharf attached. Oh, only a little one. So this could look really cool here. And it makes sense. Now, it's not quite the same footprint. But I, I'm willing to modify this a bit because it's got this dock. Um, it The buildings are on stilts. So that's going to work nicely with the way that the grade is going to be handled on this side yeah that is a keeper um oh golly i gotta pull up that plan just because i'm now i'm wondering because it has some of these buildings marked but i just want to see what those buildings are once again while i am taking the time to uh look up the the full track plan um and I thank you for joining me once again on Great Train Layouts Live. It's really great to have you along for the journey of pre-visualizing these designs and your input. Um, both your inter input in terms of what you want to see on the show as well as uh, what we actually build here. Because I love being able to take your recommendations and say, when you see something that I don't and you say, hey, what if you tried this? Okay, here we go. I've got the full plan. So this building over here isn't labeled. Um, and I know what I, we're going to make it, but I 
again. I like to have my surprises, so we're going to save that. This is a net store and chandler. What is a chandler? Well, he says, googling it in the backdrop, a chandler uh, is head of the medieval household office responsible for candles. A candle shop? Oh, this building here is a salmon cannery, which makes sense. So fish come in and they get processed and packaged and then the trains would be shipping off the, the canned goods. That makes sense. as a pr So you, we, we'll just find a building that fits in there and that looks good. But yes. Um, so there's a bit of lobster fishing on the West Coast. It's more popular on the East Coast, but whatever. I like this building too much. We are going to put the lobster company there because it just fits really nicely. Um, I live in Malmo in Sweden and have now seen your model railroad. It looks to be very professional. Well, thank you. Hmm. Um, so let's, I don't think I have any overt canneries. Let's see what else I got. So this is the fishing complex. I think I might, now the trick with this is it has this, dock that's at a very clear height but I could probably submerge that if needed to, and then kind of adapt it oh I know what I was thinking of I was thinking of putting it here again it's a little too big this is the challenge of doing these train Z builds is finding buildings that are good for model railroading which typically means a much more condensed version than what you would get in the real world um, going to save those. Uh, we do have a wharf, though, that we could probably end up putting over here, at least for the time being. The key is going to be making it look busy enough that there's a lot of visual excitement, but not so busy as to, um, so busy as to be cluttered. Oh, right, that wasn't the one that I meant to build. Um, well, we have a couple of structures specific to the railroad we can play as, with as well. So this is an oil pump house, um, which would work really well for a place like here where we just need a teeny little building. I don't think that one's labeled on the design as being dedicated to anything. It isn't, so that's a perfect place for it. And then all we have over here is an office, um, which I'm sure we can find pretty easily. Um, these stations I'd picked out because... Hmm, log cabin, there's a thought. Um, they belong with the Umpqua uh, River Railroad and Navigation, which is what we'll be using for our rolling stock. I don't know if we'll be able to... I, it might kind of cheat and say, well, we'll put the station out on a ledge from the 4x8. Um, but it would look cool if we put it here and fit it in between the two. Um, and we do have a renameable one, so we can... Oops, that's not what I meant to click. So, I am going to need to take a quick break... But when we come back, we get to have more fun with selecting our buildings. Don't go anywhere, because Great Train Layouts Live will be right back.
And I'm back, only to see we've got some spam comments we gotta deal with. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but at least that was a brief break. Thank you for your patience as we return to the Lolita and Mad River Railroad, which... Yeah, I do like having a station there. Not gonna lie. Um, but it is pretty wide. Maybe if we push it over here, which is about as far as we can push it if we're going to keep it dynamic. Um, let's leave that as a possibility. Because I do like the idea of having a station. Um, I mean, arguably, passengers would be coming over here. Well, here's the way to think about it. I think passengers definitely need to come over here because if they were to take an ocean faring vessel, they would be boarding it here. Excuse me. But that said, um, or any vessel going out, even just along the bay, but, uh, or along the coast. But that said, if we have a station here, I mean, even just a flag stop, maybe, maybe this is overkill, but a flag stop would be nice. Yeah, I think that's the way we gotta go. I wanna do the full station. Um, and we definitely haven't seen the last of those stations, even if we don't use them tonight. But I think that this is gonna work better. Um, that, I mean, it just fits into the space better. Yeah. I, I like that. And then I'm gonna... Um... We're probably going to have to move this track, but I don't want to worry about that until we've determined what the what we're going to do as far as buildings are concerned. Um, let's see what else we have. So this was a building that I selected because I thought, oh, this could be... I like this. I mean, you could say that may, maybe brick isn't the way to go, that maybe it needs to be wood... I don't know. I feel like the fishing in, the fishing industry's been here for a while. The railroad would be the new component. And the advantage of something like this... Hmm. See, this is where we get to contextualize. Does it make sense in the scene? I don't... This is definitely the keeper. With the port lobster. Hashtag lobster. Um... Let's see. Uh, look up Pencil 42's cabins. They would fill in the gap. I'll do that briefly because I won't take too long. Um, but I think the brick contrasts with the wood. So I think we're going to forego that. So author, pencil. We are doing a little bit of grocery shopping here. But um, oh, that, that rooming house is nice. Yeah, sometimes it's just a matter of reminding myself what I even have. Um, and we could actually search by author here. So if we go by... if So certain content creators, I love what they create. So if we want to remind ourselves of what we have of theirs, uh, we can just search by the author name. In the case of Pencil42, he is somebody who specializes in turn of the last century buildings and it's true he does have some really good stuff like that is a nice that's a blacksmith shop but it's it's good size it also kind of matches our flag stop here um most of these buildings aren't labeled as far as um yeah there we go flag shop blacksmith shop wood roof and then a regular one but they could kind of be whatever industries we want them to be um we could create loading platforms for them and put them on stilts we have choices um and yes i do have this cabin so thank you for reminding me about that parrot um and we might just end up kind of placing some of those I'm not sure if I want them here or else. Well, the advantage of them here is that they are very low relief. Again, I'm going to have to push out this track a little bit. But we could kind of pretend that they are bigger than what they are. Oh, I like the green. That's a nice contrast. Yep. I'm digging that. 
because we got all this red going on. Good to vary it up a little bit. Oh yeah, I forgot how much. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Yeah, there's actually quite a bit of this stuff that's really good. This is getting a little too repetitive with the cabins here, but we could put something over here. We might come back to them a little bit later. He's got some larger buildings too. This is the Carson City Car Whackers Shop. Not sure how I feel about the slate, but it does look sharp. So yeah, I think that these are the kind of buildings we want to go with ultimately. Let's see what we can figure out for, uh... oh, just a little bit too big. Otherwise, this would be perfect. I like it as a building. Um... Well, no, hang on. I like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here, and then I'm going to extend it by just building a second one and matching the rotation to so 8.9 degrees. I mean, I might have to move them anyway because I'm going to realign that track, but there is a gap in those buildings. There is our canning warehouse. And we could add some windows to that if we want to. Um, yes, pencil stuff's 80% uh, of what you use on the Washoe Valley. Oh, wait, are you the person who built the Washoe Valley? Kudos to you. Very nicely done. The Washoe Valley is a very nice train Z route. Okay, that gets us going. We might add more later, but... Oh, yeah, like that is a nice freight station. Way too overkill for what we're doing tonight. And some stuff where I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but it just looks cool. Okay, so we've got some buildings. We're going to need to realign the track, but now we can have the confidence to do so knowing roughly where things need to go i want to oh yeah i want to put this in because i like this or should that be the hmm maybe that should be the the uh yeah because it's a little hmm i like that i do that looks Right. This looks a little bright now, so I think I'm going to move this elsewhere. And then, oh, yep, there we go. There it is. Mm-hmm. And then turn it around so the doors face. Yeah. And then we have extra space in there. Oh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. A scene coming together. And if you're... The thing when it comes to train simulators... I am not much of a 3D modeler. My my skills are limited. So I do uh, rely on the kindness of strangers, so to speak. But that said, if you're into 3D modeling, there's no reason why, especially if you're into 3D modeling and you know that you have specific kits that you want to use, it would be very easy to, to mock those up. Um, in fact, my, my buddy Rico... Um, when way back when we did the Kootenai Lake Navigation Company did this wonderful grain elevator based on a specific kit that's out there. He did a great job with it. In fact, I'll, um, uh, yeah, I'll clear this out for the moment just so we can pull that up. Even though I don't think we're going to use it here because honestly, I'm using it on pretty much every other layout because there aren't a ton of super great grain elevators. But check this out. This is an actual kit. I forget who makes it. But a, he made it specifically for the Kootenai Lake Navigation Company layout that we did. So if you want to really go the distance of visualizing your layout or sharing it with other people in, in a train sim, then you can make full kits. There, there's a lot that you can do with this sim. Okay, I'm, I feel like there might need to be another building there. Do I want to find it? Well, I want to get back to Pencil 40s two stuff um and that way anyway so we're gonna kind of oh, bugger um and i don't know author um we're gonna get to placing buildings on the other side because i think that that's going to be kind of part of what dictates how the terrain looks and how we build things around other things 
Oh, Virginia City Yard Office would be perfect for where we need a yard office over here. Look at that. Um, turntable. Interesting. Some small trestles. Tents. Uh, steamboat baths. Oh, that's a nice structure. Maybe we'll put that over here. I don't think that building's claimed as being anything else. It is not. So, it doesn't look like it pertains to the railroad. Even this building, this is listed as a firehouse. Let's, we'll look for that in a moment. Before we get to that, um, we've got these kind of small shacks that are on stilts, which look yeah, cool. Um, I kind of want to go rural fire station. What did you know? And what did you know? It also really nicely fits in there. Perfect. And I like I, I like having a brick building, and I like how it it looks right next to the track. Um, actually, those house buildings. So, what is this thing that is serviced by rail? Not actually specified what we've got here. So we've got a little bit of leeway with what we put there. So maybe we would end up building a, well, not a stack with a, your shack with a stone chimney, but rooming house, maybe? Hmm. And what is that in between the track? Well, it doesn't say what's between the tracks. So we might end up putting a little shack of some kind there i mean it fits I, I just don't like the chimney too elaborate but yeah this is actually yeah proving all full that's gonna be yeah way too big unsurprisingly some nice bridges though a bit too tall for um this is going to be too tall for what we're building here. I mean, it fits right. And we just have to bring the land up to... Actually, it's not a bad fit. I might be talked out of doing that truss bridge. Because if we start it here... Hmm. 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 That could be something. I'm not set on that. I'm not entirely set on that one way or another. The collaborators have arrived. Well, thank you, collaborators, and... I appreciate whatever input you can give to... Live up to your name of collaborating. Uh, that yellow building's looking pretty cool, actually. Uh, old store green. Ah, yeah, this is the kind of thing we need. Um... Do I like... Th I think I do like that better. Uh, I like that it has the, the, the porch to it. Yeah. Uh, old mill. Now, I like how that looks. I'd be tempted to put it over there, except I know it's just going to be way too big for anything we have. Unless we put it in the corner. And we'd have to cheat a little bit on those dimensions. I do like that though i might i might give myself a little bit of an allowance i mean on his it's just grass here but ah oh, come on the, the the rusty stacks and everything like that's cool that's that's oh yeah I, i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna give myself a little bit a little bit of an allowance space wise so, i i think i can do that <laughs> Uh, hope you guys are having fun and enjoying this. Uh, this is this this is a really nifty plan. Uh, I really like what Ian's come up with uh, for this. May he rest in peace. He, he he I've I mean I remember seeing his layouts going back decades, and I never really attributed it to him. But now that I've become so 
uh, involved in researching different layout plans. I've seen his name come up a lot as an influence. There were a lot of people offering tributes online. And this artistic style of how he draws the layouts, there's, it's just very distinct. Um, so it's evident that uh, it's evident that he knew what he was doing and he he cared about the craft of what he was doing. The designing layouts wasn't just about sort of figuring out what he wanted. He was really trying to help others along the way. And I give him immense credit for that. And it's something that I hope that I'm doing with with this show. I, I, I'm very new into this journey of, of layout design, especially designing layouts. Um, but I hope that what I'm doing here with visualizing provides you with with some ideas with some inspiration for your own projects because it's all about helping helping one another and out to figure out what's the best way to have fun as we want to have fun that's the way I look at it I like some of these buildings they're just not quite facing the right way Again, we've got kind of a a downtown storefront. I mean, it's gorgeous. Way too big, but gorgeous. An ice house. Oh, that could make that work. An ice house would actually make sense. This is where we also get into a little bit of what's going to have to be going on with the, with the landscape. I, maybe we'll just go with a regular. Oh, oopsie doopsie. Um, I think we might just end up doing a house. I mean, these are nice buildings, but they are just a wee too big. That warehouse looks sharp, though. Yeah, let's try it over here. No, why am I even bothering? That is way too big. Some dry cleaners. Was dry cleaning a thing 120 years ago? Somehow I think the answer to that is no. Um, a butter manufacturer. Ooh, that's a nice building, though. If only I had a little bit more room in there, because then I could just fit in there. That'd be nice. I feel like we're so close. Let's just get this one last building figured out. One. Ooh, that might be it. Yeah, I think that'll that'll work. And we might have to bury it in the land a little bit. Uh, mm, on second thought, I think it is a little too small. It's like we need this width. Um, and maybe I could do that and then change that. But I like that blue building. I don't want to change that. That's a sharp building. Hmm. Oh, so many building so little time what if we put this well but the, i can't turn it that way can i not without going into the track maybe maybe i'll cheat and give myself a little bit of room going into the track i do like that as a not sure about the blue of this building is there another color oh, i'm gonna need to hide the is there another color that i can go with this board Oh, that's a very different building. Um, steam home baths early. What if we just did that? What if that was the building? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, except I think, it's got, <laughs> I think that's encroaching on our road a bit too much. And it's not just even a matter of matching the plan. I'm just also looking at where the the firehouse is. And yes, we can move the firehouse back. But then you've got this weird kind of angle going into that road. I don't know. I don't... The other thing I'm keeping in mind, too, is that if we're looking at the layout like this, which is a very real angle to look at the layout, um, it be, does it look weird... Actually, we should try this. Um, 
So I'm going to build a sample train because I want to see how it's actually going to look having a train on top of those buildings. Because that is a relevant question. Because you figure you're, you're, and this again comes back to why we do this, is because it's about how all of this relates to itself. And there is something cool about the seeing the train over the building, but I don't want it to look like the train is actually driving on the roof. And right now, it looks like the train's on the roof. There's only enough room for the fiddler up there. We don't have enough room for the train as well. So we are going to adapt, um, which means let's bring up Mr. 42's stuff again, because it's the right ballpark of what I want, and he's very much within the right era of what I want. So we are we're definitely getting there as far as how to get that right specific thing. See, this might be the place to use that blacksmith shop because it matches... Well, I don't know if I needed to match that. But if we look at it, I'm not sure about those buildings, but now I can see... See, this is what I like about this more. Now I can actually see ground in between the track and the building, so it's not like the train is floating above the building. The only other way that I would take this um, would be um, sorry, I'm reading the, some of your comments, but the only other way I would take this is if I was putting, say, if this was 1940s Brooklyn tall industrial warehouses and that I was actually blocking the track. That's the only way that I would do this. Otherwise, it needs that grass. And I like that separation. So I think we are getting there. I But I do want something a bit more storefronty than that. Maybe this is where we use that cabin. Yeah. So we could use this cabin here, which... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. We could fit that cabin in here. And it might be a little weird that it has a chimney, but I don't care. Because it can fit in there. And it looks like it belongs. There we go. Yay. Okay. All right. What else we got? So we have some other cabins. Oh, this, mm, here we go. This is the stuff, I think. I think this is going to be a... Well, that's cool. <laughs> might be a little uh, late for our era, but I don't know. That's cute. I'm going to leave that there for the time being. Yay for accidentally clicking on certain things on the keyboard. Uh, not what I was going for. What we want is... Yeah, this kind of thing going on. If What if we go with these really... Yeah. Kind of cabiny things. Because then the hill really stands out. We've given ourselves enough space behind... I don't know. I want them to be maybe a bit taller than that. I mean, I like them. I do like them. What 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 do people think uh, on the cabins? I'm gonna get to some comment reading. Uh, hey, Brian Strait, how's it going? Well, you can see for yourself. We're making some pretty good progress. Um, uh, yes, the better cup is uh, on display. I'm late to the party this week. Never know what to expect. What is going to be built in these episodes looking good. Well, I'm glad that you're liking the look of it. Um, and, and then Road uh, road Burner, uh, if you were to put an interchange with the Class 4 Railroad of this route, where would you put it? Good question. You've got two options. Um, so the way that Ian drew up his proposed extension would be coming off of this cassette here. Um, that would have you then going... Uh, wait, did I... I'm just realizing I don't think my cursor is visible, so let me change that. That would have you going off to, if we're looking at the layout this way, to the left and then away from where the camera is at right now. Uh, that's probably the, how we would be doing that. Okay, now, yeah, now you can, so one way is to have the track coming off from here. Your other answer, uh, and also how you could make it into a, a full loop, would be to have... Uh, 
track coming from here because there's no reason the track couldn't extend off of here, climb a grade, and meet it back there. So this is, and he built it specifically with expansion in mind that you could start with a four by eight um, and go from there. And one of the things that I've consistently seen uh, as I've learned more about track design is if you can build yourself a small layout with the potential to expand in the future, it's a great way of starting small, they're working big. You don't intimidate yourself with the big basement empire that then has all this plywood that it takes 10 years to fill. You start with one sheet of plywood, you fill that, and then you move on. And I think this is a great way of doing that. So those are the two ways we could do that. Um, we're going to go with these houses for now. Subject to change, but I want to get to some scenery. I want to get... This is definitely... Yeah, I'm looking at the time going, yeah, this is probably going to be two builds so what do i want to do today oh i promised you a big ship you've waited long enough let's put the big schooner in there <clears throat> there once was a ship that put to sea the name of the ship was the billy of tea the winds blew blew up her bow droop down blow me billy boys blow soon may the wellerman come to bring the sugar and tea and rum one day when the tonning is done, we'll take our leave and go. Please don't run away because I sang. Hopefully you enjoyed that. <clears throat> she had not been two weeks from shore. With the... All right, I'm good. Check that out. Courtesy of my man Rico, who, who he'd worked on this anyway, but I just want to give him credit because he did such a nice job with this. Uh, he did this great layout called the Sisibu, which is on the Train Z download station. Um, and this ship is uh, a center point of one of the scenes. So we're going to make it a center point of this scene. And to be fair, I did give myself options. Um, if you wanted to go a little bit later, we've got this great tramp steamer. Uh, the Pearl. We've got, uh, well, the Elisa is actually going to go on the other side. We're going to put the Elisa over here for the time being. Um... But I just love the schooner. I love the people hanging around it. So I, I did think, well, maybe we'll try other boats. It's like, no, 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 no. That schooner is is stealing the show. We got to keep the schooner. <laughs> so, yes, uh, that is what we are going for uh, as far as the big boat. So again, something that wouldn't realistically be able to fit through there, but we want to make it look like it could. We want to take it... This again comes into how do we separate scenes. So essentially, yes, this is one big long scene. But with that said, are there ways in which we actually might break that up a little bit and, and give it a bit more? Hmm, that doesn't look. There we go. That'll work. Um, can we make it so that this scene feels different from this scene and i'm not sure if we can but we're gonna try so i think what we're gonna work on tonight we're gonna see what we can do on this side of the layout and then maybe next week we'll come back or next week next month we'll come back and work on the other side uh because i feel like this could be a a, a two stream build and I always take your feedback into account. So if, if you're finding this layout absolutely boring, then uh, I'll finish it up in the backdrop. Uh, but if you're enjoying this, then we'll probably make it next week's stream. I don't like the wood texture on this. It's a little too bright. But if I search office, I think we should be able to find something that works. Mm, stone building feels too permanent and also has an issue with its alpha channel uh oh, i forgot about these mm, a bit too clean problem with some of those buildings i mean an impressive structure if i had room for that i'd totally go for it like if this were a backdrop i would put it there because that is just gorgeous this seems more like it yep here we go I think that's where it was yeah that seems about right maybe a little under detailed maybe i could i mean it works there's nothing technically wrong with it but 
This is me being picky and saying, yeah, maybe there's a nicer building that we could go with. Telegraph office. Maybe. Uh, not sure about the green. There's the building we were using. Uh, sh mm -hmm. Old post office. Well, that's wonderfully weathered. Uh, that's a nice building. Pretty for somewhere in Europe. Uh, we'll just leave it as is. I'll, I'll nitpick that later. This is good enough. It, point is, it, it's the right size. And we're not really going to be able to do much as far as... I want this to feel busy and involved. But there's no room for doing view blocks as far as... Um, we can't do view blocks by land or trees. So, and the question becomes, do we need to? I mean, does it need to be split up? And I don't know that it does. I mean, when we look at the plan, and you can check it out in the lower right corner and the larger versions available in the description, this is just green and open, and all we've got is this office, some type of small functional house, We've got a pull derrick here. Ah, I can do something about a pull derrick. But that's really going to be it as far as... Uh... Yeah, that's what I want. There we go. That, I, I, it's actually called... So it's calling for a pull derrick. Let's see what that looks like. So this is a... Um, mechanical. But this is what it's talking about. This is a pole derrick, which might be a wee bit too small to actually get uh, things on the ship. But I also need to be able to fit it. Hmm. I mean, I like it. I just don't know that that specific one fits. Um, uh, let's see. So a wood one. So that's sort of the same. They might all be the same shape. Oh, white's interesting, but probably too nice. We'll go with the dark one. Yeah, I don't think this... It doesn't quite work from the standpoint that I think it's a bit too small. But let's see if I can find something that... I mean, this would definitely fit. So I'm kind of inclined to do this from the standpoint that... Fits even better, and it's larger. Maybe, maybe I should do both. So we could put this here, and this here. And I'm going to keep looking and see if I can find any others. Maybe just do a quick shopping trip and see if there's a Derek that's available. Um, that's probably the way to go about it. Those are some nice things. Um, not what I was looking for, but they're nice things. <laughs> that feeling of you're looking for one thing, you're like, oh, well, this other thing that I is completely unrelated to that one thing um, would be kind of nice. Look, I've just found, I've seen some crossings where I thought, oh, that would actually be quite pretty. Um, yeah. Definitely some nice stuff. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Getting getting unnecessarily distracted in... Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, that would be nice. But uh, I can't help myself. Sometimes you see things and you're like, Oh, yeah, that is actually really nice. And I can use that in some capacity. Um... What else do I want while I'm at it? I've, I've seen a couple of things that will come into use when we get to playing with the layout. And now I'm going to actually do what I was, said I was going to do and look up the Derek. Meanwhile, uh, the crane with the crank wheel has a separate beam brace piece. Uh, 
Okay, I'll see if I can find that. Um, no, I don't see any other Derek Crane, so I think that's going to be what we got to work with, uh, size-wise. Uh, I don't know if there's anything larger. Are you talking about the, oh, the crane with the crank wheel has a separate mechanical piece. Uh, beam. Let me see if I could search beam brace and find what you're talking about. Uh, doesn't come up when I search beam brace. If you could, uh, Rico, if you could post with the, um, uh, what the name of it is, then I'll, I'll be sure to add it in there. Because, yeah, I see my, my hook is sinking in the ground. So we'll get to that. Okay, so that's good enough for initial structures. Um, now the question of where are roads, or are there really roads around here, or is it all kind of open? Well, if we look at that track plan in detail, we see it's pretty much all open. So the road kind of spills across those few switches, and then that's kind of it. Um, so it com where we see these lines here, that is the road, and then... This is all wharf. So I think that what will look best is if we sink the track into the ground here. I think that's just going to make the greatest degree of sense because... Or, well, let's turn off the base maps now. So when we're looking... Because we aren't needing it as much. Uh, yeah, so we talked about whether or not we do stone wall or if it's just going to be a naturally falling wall I... let's answer that question i think i know what i want to do and i think what i want to do is one of these cl rock splines um with grass rock faced with grass like so because well we'll compare them the question is, do we want grass or do we not want them? We'll start with... Uh, we'll start with this. So if we just do the rock face like so, because of the track we've used, we can have that track sitting on that uneven rock face, and it'll look okay. And if we lower the terrain down to expose it, it looks actually really cool. So that is one potential avenue that we go. And it's relevant to what we're doing now because it's I, I don't want to mess with the terrain and getting the terrain sunk in with the uh through there. It, once I Yeah, once I'm have everything else and then we could get the terrain set because I don't want to do the terrain and then mess it up with other things that I end up working on. So this is the grass with the rock, which is a little bit more even and what i like about it is that and there's a little bit of color variation because i think color variation is going to kind of be a factor here we don't want it to be too gray i'm seeing a lot of rock i'm seeing a lot of opportunities for things to look gray and i don't want it to become monotonous the other, so, well, that's one way. So I think that over here it's going to be those. Now, the thought that just popped into my head, admittedly, uh, is that what if we do some kind of stone wall for the harbor itself? And I hear you, and I, I do agree that that might be the way to go on that. But I want a rock wall for this part. Um, oh, uh, RC Derek braces. I might already have that. Um, Derek bra brace. Yes, I do have that. So, um, oh, does that? Oh, I I think you're saying that that goes onto the back of it like so I mean that seems like yep that seems about right 
looks cool. Now in real life, yeah, you'd have them off to the side, but one has to make concessions. Okay, back to this. So this is where we get into that pre-visualization of what do we like the look of the best. Do we want a natural rock wall or do we want to have a man-made stone wall or concrete definitely don't want to do concrete here that i'm certain of i i could see m many more modern concrete applications so definitely definitely want to do rock and stone um i don't like how it sits it has to sit that low because otherwise the grass sticks through yeah grass starts to stick through the track which does not look good. So we might end up actually making this all stone wall. Let's see what our stone wall options are, shall we? Because this and the material we choose for here is very relevant because in all versions, whether you're taking it at just whether you would kind of adhere to his vision of you look at the layout this way and this way or all four ways or however you're going to have a really nice view i mean look at that the sh you've got the ship in the distance you've got the cranes this is a this is a screenshot moment or this is a photo moment fo photo magazine cover type of scene ergo the type of how we use stone and rock it matters. It, we and we want that to really shine. In fact, I, I think we might even kind of get ahead of ourselves a little bit and see how things work along here. Because I'm inclined to... Oh, did we reach the end of the playlist? Okay. Well, that's good. Um, uh, da -da. Where did I put that tab? Um, there we are. So, uh, I'm inclined to cheat a little bit and get it and just put a rock wall on here just so that we're getting this part of things done. Uh, seal rock fit, yeah. I'm not sure if I like this specific texture. It, it's maybe a bit too bright. I, I might want to go with that darker rock. But just to say... Hmm, that's also kind of weird how it's doing the... Hmm. Looks a bit rough. Looks way too mechanical. I'm not sure what that's about. Usually that one doesn't give me issues. Um... Maybe one of these other ones will work a little better. Oh, yes. And, yeah. You know, rock place would... Ooh, I like that even better. Yep, that's what we're going with. There it is. Okay. So, for this side, we there's no question we're doing rock wall here. Because you've got this track way, way, way up above the water. And the only way we could justify that while keeping to the idea that this is some sort of... This is a railroad that does not have a ton of money. Erco wouldn't be building gigantic trestle structures and, and that type of thing. The only way that makes sense is if we say it's a rock wall. That is the only way. Otherwise, it just looks beyond uh, ridiculous. And we'll just put it like that. So that is not the final word on what that's going to look like, but that gives us a starting point. I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to layer it because it's a little too short, but it gives us a starting point. You can see what it's going towards. Ah, darn it. He says it He says it could be a starting point, and then he keeps staring at it going, no, it really needs to be look nicer. So going to have to play around with the track as well because obviously this is rough terrain and the way that the track just saws off is, is way too clean but that is a question for another moment of time for now we are going to kind of loop around this we're going to place it lower 
And we'll probably also place some other boulders and the like so it, it looks more randomized. But just to give you a sense of what we're going for here. Now we've got these two rock layers. Yes, there it is. Hopefully you can see it. Hopefully it's, it's starting to open up. This is a... So this is something we know that we're doing. We're not messing with it. In the sense that we know this is the material we're going to use. We could clean it up later. But we know that's what we're going for. Um, like so. So now we want something on the other side of the tracks that matches that. Now we could just use the same texture. Have it going the other way. And that might be what we do. But actually, I think what I'm going to do is sort of a combination of two different approaches. I want the rock wall, but I might also want the stone wall. I'm going to look at my stone wall options and figure out how I want to go from there. Um, Gotta say this is right up my alley, Nick. Love it. Glad that you're enjoying it. Uh, the collaborators. I'm, I'm loving it. This, I've, there's something always very romantic about these seaside layouts. I, for like one, there's a, and I've did, thought of making this a, a micro layout or, or, or something. Um, there's this video online uh, from the 50s, so it would have been originally film. I think it's, uh the British series Railway, not Railway Roundabout, but Railway Action has some name like that. Uh, Chris Eden Greed's talked about it. But there's this great shot of um, uh, the Southern Railway E2, aka Thomas the Tank Engine, um, engines in real life, switching out Southampton docks. And you see these giant cranes and these giant ships that are dwarfing it. And I, I saw that shot and I immediately thought I, I want to build a layout based on that. And that might be a micro layout that we do on the show here. Uh, I've debated doing it in real life, but I don't think it'll happen. Uh, I have way too many ideas for way too many layouts. That's why I spend my time doing these. But simply to say, I've always loved the sea uh, side as a theme. Uh, I, I, I mean... I encourage every, even if you're one of those people who says, I've outgrown Thomas the Tank Engine, I don't even, ever need to see it again. Watch The Flying Kipper. Go to YouTube, it's a four and a half minute episode, watch The Flying Kipper. The modeling in that is beautiful. The, the fog and the atmosphere in that episode is astounding. And even if you, you dismiss it as talking trade... I hear you, but check out the modeling. It is really worth your time in that regard. Um, so, simply to say that that's that kind of atmosphere is something that's always had a, an appeal. Um, Double two fan five, thanks for joining. Uh, one, uh, it's far faster to fix mistake where it's an actually building a physical model on a table doesn't allow for it so much. That's why I'm a big fan of, of this approach because we get to see if we like a thing without having to have committed to it and then realize, you know, crap, like you don't build a whole rock plaster wall on them and go, oh, darn it. I can't, I don't actually like how that looks. Um... Let's see what we're going to do here. This is going to be an interesting one as well. Now, this part's technically hidden, but I might make it visible just because I might make my staging come off the edge here. Just because then we don't have to have a backdrop right next to the track. I'd much rather have the track and then have another backdrop. I'm not, not sure on that, but that's what I'm going to go with for tonight. Um, so this is our initial kind of just roughing it in. And I do think we want to be consistent with the rock material because geologically, I feel like this would be kind of the same look. Yeah. Yeah, that is nice. I mean, when we look at... Now, 
The only thing I'm not sure of is I, I, you know, how stark it is to have these houses right next to the rock wall. So there's part of me saying let's do a stone wall there instead. I could see doing that. I could see doing both. Um, we could also just maybe bring the houses closer, maybe use some trees. We don't have a lot of wildlife here. Wildlife? Yeah. Uh, so we might maybe add a couple of trees just to give a little bit of visual variety. I'm not certain on that. We'll get back to that. Stone wall. I've been talking about would a stone wall work for long enough. Let's see if that is actually the case so here is a stone wall i think he has stone yeah stone retaining walls with grass texture yes this is the juice right here we've got reasonably tall coverage we've got grass texture underneath it's flat so we can bring it up higher to the track level i think we might end up doing both and there might be a version with dirt or something that we can cover over. I'm not quite sure on that yet. But, do I like how those two stone walls... Oh, do I like how those two stone walls work? Plus the fact that then the track looks clean on the edge? Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, and if I needed to prove... Uh, any further how much I like it? Uh, well. Allow me to bring down our little train here. I mean, that is the ticket. Why can't I? There we go. Like that. Ugh. Atmosphere. I mean, yes, we need our water, we need our textures, but atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, this is... Okay, so we've only got 15 minutes left. Man, this one's been going fast. We're definitely spending next month on this. We we got a, we got a lot of ground to cover, <laughs> literally and figuratively. This is worth a second month. But let's see if we can at least get this port done. Because um, I think we can do that. I might be refining a few things in between. Um, but we definitely got enough to play with here to, to make it work. Um... So CL wall stone. I like that. I just want to see, do I want to change the grass texture above it? I'm not sure on that. I feel like we're talking Pacific Northwest. So I feel like the grass should be fairly um, dark. Yeah. Oh, these are bigger rocks though than those. Yeah, let's replace that with that. So, replace, uh, not the grid, that retaining wall with this retaining wall. And that looks like, ooh, not sure how that happened. Eh, something went a bit odd there. Uh, block face with grass. Nope, that's the wrong one. That's why I wanted walls. Th there we go. Still not getting it right. Oh, because I got the wrong... That's why. Okay. So we are replacing the right thing, but we need to replace it with that. Uh, there we go. Okay. And now, when we replace it, it looks like it's backwards. You know, I'm just going to leave it because I, I really do want to get this. I want to get this at least filled in and textured. So we'll worry about whether or not that's the perfect one a bit later. Okay, so... Um, but I am going to keep it the same one just so that it's consistent. Now... Uh, lots of different dock walls. Um, some would be wood. I'm going to keep going with stone on this. I feel like that's just the way I want to do it. And maybe I'll change my mind in between. But I like the idea that this is an older port. Um, 
ergo why it would be stone and not wood. Um, now, it does have grass, but you can see that there's a little bit of a... a there's a little bit of an elevation difference, so we could swap it to whatever. Because I feel like this is probably going to be some kind of... Uh, like stone stone dirt mixture that we're going with here for the actual um texture on the ground and we're going to be covering the track rail with it anyway so but this will give us our starting point i might have to temporarily get uh bodie mcboat face out of the way Oh, that's the rock wall, which we might have to refine a little bit, but we'll just get that in there first. Okay. And that way, then, the part of why I love using these retaining walls so much when it comes to trains you root building is because that way you have ground coverage even where you don't have ground. Because I could always put a, a dirt uh, spline along there if I need to um, refine that a bit more. Which I might. Um, that's going to be a matter of seeing what the water level looks like. I want to use quote-unquote real water for this as opposed to just um, fill. Uh, just a, a spline because I want the reflections and all the kind of cool stuff that uh, Trainsy does when you're using real water. Now, some of this is definitely going to need to be refined next week, but I do... I might cheat and cut into playtime a little bit, but I don't want to do too much because I feel like there is a there's a lot of switching, there's a lot of kind of taking cars here, there, and everywhere. I want to have that fun, so yeah, we might cut into playtime a little bit, but I'm gonna try to not do too much. Okay. Oh, I mean, this is on this is a view that's. You know, unless you stick the layout in the center of your room, you don't get this angle, but... Oh, that's a good angle. Like, a, a foreground, background, we're really playing with depth, we're really playing with uh, dimension. Uh, oh, secret tunnel! Oh, right. With the rock wall on the dock, yeah. <laughs> gotcha on that. Um, and yes, I... I I appreciate your avatar reference there. Always appreciate a good avatar reference. Okay, let us see what it looks like when we... Well, do I want to put the water in or do I want to get the, t the riverbed texture? We'll, we'll do texturing. Okay, now for this part. Well, if I... Oh, wait, there's a really nice stone texture. I used... There's, it's a street texture. Oh. Now, now if I can remember what it is. Yeah, I used it on one of the other layouts. Um. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, I know what I want to... Oh, yep, there it is. That's the one. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel like I want to go cobblestone on this. And that might change. I mean, maybe cobblestone is too elaborate. But I do feel like this is one place where I want to go with a stone. Because I feel like that, it just adds to the sense of age. Yeah, I like that. Um... And that way, then, it lines up right with our rock wall. Ooh, that's perfect. And then we can we can lower and raise the terrain, and you're not going to have this awkward uh, transition between the land and the terrain. So let us continue that flow. Uh, we'll get the height and apply it to subsequent pieces just so that we're keeping consistent with it. Because all of this track is at the same grade. So that d never changes. That's going to be straight. And then we're going to move that. Uh, 
Where do we think it stops? Uh, probably where the stone wall stops for now, which is right here. Yeah. Yep. That I like. And before you say, Nick, your train is sinking into the ground. It is, but that's just a train Z bug. Yeah. That That is what I want. That is in exactly what I want. And it may not be what you want. You may say, I'd prefer dirt. I'd prefer concrete. I might be changing the era. I mean, that's the beauty of this. You you, you could take this design and take it so many ways. Um, oh, that is nice. And I th think what would be... Okay, so now I'm thinking... Uh, right, and that'll go all the way to the edge, and then along there, and then that'll be our straight section, and then we'll apply the height there and there. Um, the other consideration, consideration that I'm making is... Where do I want it to change? And do I want it to change? As in, do I just want to have nothing but cobblestone? Like so... Which I could, but I feel like it might be a little too... Even if we add clutter, it might be a little too plain. I kind of want to have the cobblestone parallel this track here. So it has a nice clean line to serve as a transition point. Uh, I think I deleted something there. I didn't mean to. Because it's, I mean, it's very awkward the way it is. Yes, the building's half sunk. I'm ignoring that. Um, what else do we have? Oh, sidewalk versions. Do I want a sidewalk along the edge of the wharf? Um, maybe? I'm not sure if I want a sidewalk along the edge of the wharf, but I won't know until I try. So if we raise the... I, I don't think I do because there's not enough room for it here yeah i love it but i don't want it there some other place we can use sidewalk uh really like the cobblestone it would set the dock in the late seven and then railroad came a lot that's my thinking i want this to feel like a really old port i i want it to feel like it's established so the railroad itself may be a new addition and it may be an addition that doesn't have a lot of money that's also nice um but i want hmm which of those do i like better they're actually pretty close That is not what I want. Um, but yeah. And as we've talked about on the show before, anytime you have an opportunity to make your railroad feel like there is a history that predates what people are seeing, then you are getting into some really magical territory. So... I want to, I, I want, partially I want to be judicious because there's a layout that I've been working on that I use a lot of, um, I, lo I use a lot of this on there too. It's not a seaside layout. It's actually a beer, uh, a, a brewery. Um, but I, I don't want it to be samey. I, I don't want my style to be too predictable. So I think we're just going to go with that for what it is. I like how it, it closes there. That feels right to me. Because now you have these two tracks that are clearly... Yeah. You have these two tracks that are clearly designed for unloading. Um, either one could be unloaded and it gives you more flexibility with how you switch. And then you've got the mains, which are going to be embedded in dirt. So ergo, you could run through, but... Um, there's not. There's more visual variety in what we're dealing with as a result. It's not all stone. And it kind of. I think it also helps to highlight the the boat. I mean, the boat stands out. The boat is pretty prominent. But I think it helps to highlight this is where the action is. And then here's where the main line is. Um. 
let me just see if I like. I, I do think I want this part to be embedded because I think otherwise the transition between um, what is and isn't uh, in the street looks odd. But let's see. Oops, I want that to go up. Uh, down and then up. Yeah. This is why I didn't want to mess with the terrain until I knew what other spline objects I want. Oh, yeah, that's that's good. Now, at some point, we have to transition out of the thing. And how do we do that? Good question. Well, let us... Let's figure out where this... If there's any guides here to help us... Oh, it lowered the... Uh, we're going to need to raise that up. You raise me up so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, that works perfectly. So the road will go along here, like so-ish. Yeah, like, like that, and then here, and then it can just continue. I have no idea what it looks like it's doing something odd, but I can just switch that back to point of three. Mm, I might have to use a couple of layers. Mm. Maybe we'll just do it at an angle, but then it has to run through it. I, mm. I might stop it short. Uh, except I, I am probably going to need something. Ooh. No. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, actually, I think I can make that work. So if we go here to here. And then we'll try to match it at the corners. So what I want to do is I want to fit the cobblestone right inside the curve. It, and then we'll stop it about there. And then I want to use... Oof, oof, that looks... Not as smooth as I wanted it to look. But maybe I can go with the angular look of things. I'm thinking that my saving grace might be this sidewalk. Because if we have sidewalk coming along here, it could even be at the same height. It doesn't have to officially be a sidewalk. But then... We have, mm, I, I like this, we have a border for the railroad, if that makes sense. It's, it's something to kind of clue it in, that there, this is a, an edge. I don't know if anything I'm saying makes sense, which is kind of standard for me, but hopefully it's making sense to you as it is to me. And we're going to need to make the height a little bit lower because it's the sidewalk, so it's raised up. Uh, the collaborators, you know what it needs? Lobster specs. You were right about that. Um, I'll show you where they're going to go because now I realize that you're Mike, so I hear you on that. They're going to go in the other harbor because that's the fishing harbor. Um, and so then I think what I'm going to do do to close this corner up is just do some nice artsy fartsy wartsy uh <laughs> do i have enough splines yet <laughs> do I, I i'm not sure if i have enough splines yet maybe i do maybe i don't um oh something like that uh i gotta look at that in the gameplay mode because that is just a little too much yeah uh okay we have a bit of z fighting because i didn't change the elevation on those but that looks great that is exactly what i wanted and yep i am very happy with that and i might extend this uh sidewalk to go along where the track does to really draw out that border but at the very least it cleans up that corner super nicely and it gives me a means of um, yeah, and I could move the ship forward a little bit too, but I do want that track to be right next to the water. I mean, yeah, not like you could ever see it in real life that way, but 
sometimes it's just about the knowledge. It, it's like people who super detail buildings that are never going to be... Oh, darn it, I put them all in the base maps later, didn't I? Well, I'll sort that out later. Well, no, because I'm not going to be able to see them. I'm going to have to fix that now. Oh, sigh. Um, but, yeah, it, people who super detail buildings where you look at it and you go, well, you're never going to actually see the inside of that building. And sometimes you just do it because you want to know that you have that detail there. It's good because otherwise it would stick out in your mind. That kind of feeling. Okay, that's a root layer. That's a root layer. That's a root layer. That's a root layer. But yeah, this is... This is a really cool plan. Uh, and measurable credit goes to uh, to Ian Rice for coming up with this because I just it, it is so distinct. Honestly, I feel like in general there's such a, this era of railroading, early 1900s, goes so overlooked. I mean, how many manufacturers can you point to are actually producing anything for between 1870? and 1910 not many and i feel like that there's there's some lovely qualities about this era of railroading um that you just don't get the soon and believe me we, we are going to do a really nice 1950s dock layout uh that at least one um because i love the idea of having an 060 tank engine navigating some tight curves between buildings and going onto a car ferry. That is unquestionably going to happen. But, um, that said, it would just be nice to have more variety in our modeling, um, in ready-to-run things. I mean, yes, you could scratch build, but... Just be nice to have more that one could do with with just buying something off the shelf um somebody was asking me on facebook if uh, the engine that we're using tonight buttercup uh, is is like the torch lake or they were saying it, it was they were asking if i could do a greenfield village layout because the engine looks uh like torch lake and it does bear similarity with the torch lake is the last surviving um mason bogey engine um, and it is a really pretty engine, but it is an 064, not an 042. But the point is, I love a ready-to-run Mason Bogey uh, 064, but we don't have any. Uh, honestly, I was looking at um, modern 440s like Bachman ran, and not only is nobody making them, the Bachman ones are incredibly hard to come by. Hmm. This is good tea. I have to remember myself to ask uh to remember to ask my, uh, my wife what she which flavor that was i know it was a loose leaf mm, yeah so i'm digging the I, I kind of like it like that i do like seeing the track and i thought i'd want it buried but i'm not sure that i do so for the time being uncovered, it's going to remain. Let's get some textures. Let's get some roads in the reverse order. So first, let's do roads. Um, what do I want to do for that? Maybe just a uh, JR dirt road. Uh, wide. I feel like this would all be... I want this all unpaved. That looks like what I want. And we'll get that. Like so. I mean, we probably would have a sidewalk there. And then we'll curve that out there. Although I want that to be straight. And then here, we'll have some type of intersection because we've got the fire station and they have to have a way of getting their fire equipment out. Which, admittedly, junctioning these three roads will be a little tricky, but 
Eh, I'm satisfied enough with that. Now the road, how, I think, I think he has it coming in here, but we've got our crane there. So now I'm getting into this question. I mean, I like how defined of an edge that is. If we go back to uh, the gameplay mode, it's a nice clean edge. But I feel like we need... I feel like it needs to be dirt so that they can get to the road. Because we've got this Derek crane block in the way. And yes, we can move the Derek crane, but I like it there. I want more cranes. Yeah, I, th I think we'll end up just... Maybe we'll expose the track here to kind of give some visual variety so it isn't all buried. But I do want to have that there. Ron uh, Paludin mentions pre-1850s also neglected. Yeah, I mean, unless you get the Bachman, DeWitt Clinton, or... Let's see, you could get the DeWitt Clinton, you could get the John Bull, the Lafayette, and that's kind of it. And even there, you've only got the kind of showpiece passenger cars. You don't have freight cars. Uh, shout out to my friend Frank DiStefano, who is... Uh, modeling oh, what is his i his i think his railroad's called the brooklyn and flushing and he is modeling 1830s um and he's using some of the off-the-shelf bachman stuff but he is also uh he, he's kit bashed freight cars and the like it's cool please tell me i'm not oh, darn it i'm doing it again aren't i <laughs> uh oh no i'm not because okay good i was afraid it was building on the base map slip um but yeah uh, and even there they're not using kd couplers so it's not the most it's not the easiest to be able to switch with and so forth then you get on also kind of lack of sort of general histories of like what would it if i wanted to model what it was like to haul freight in the 1850s what does that look like like what types of switching were or were not being done um Oh, that reminds me. I actually have some really nice uh, stuff of that era for Train Z. So, yeah, let me show what that would look like to an extent. Um, this is getting off track a little bit, but I think it's just too cool to not do it. Um, so, if we want a little bit of that 1850s, uh, then I want to say... Norris? Yeah. Yep. So, getting a little bit of that flavor of if we really wanted to take it back to the old school. Um, and then we'll just briefly go into driver mode so we can appreciate that. Like, that is nice. Maybe next week we'll play in, a, in an earlier era. I don't know that I have a lot of free cars for it. Um, but we can kind of kit bash things and make it work for the sake of just having a little bit. Um, do I have that train selected? Yes. Oh, that was weird. Oh, right. I keep I'm pressing the wrong key. Oh. I know this is getting off track, sorry guys, but oh, doesn't that just look so cool? Yeah. I mean, the, arguably the ship might be a little uh, too old, even for 1900s, but... I like it. Maybe that's what we'll do next week. Or, uh, I keep saying next week. Th th these Freudian slips saying that, yes, I'd like to stream next week, but I, I do need to... I know what I've got going on next week. So, yeah. Next month. Um, but, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff right there. And we're, we're going to get to this shortly, because I know. We're, we're, we're cutting into playtime. Um... 
Yeah, the the Norris. Um, that's a Ben Neal. That's a very old Ben Neal model. Uh, Subpart Productions. If you search his name, you'll you'll find his website. That's where I got that from. And there's some good stuff like Stevenson's Rocket that you can find. Really love if somebody made the Dewitt Clinton. All right. Um, so we increased the terrain because that way we can take this road and kind of curve it around and make it come in and mm, I mean it is really pushing for having everything buried which may not be that big of a deal I mean we are going to have exposed tracks so it's not like nothing is going to be exposed but I do think that there's a practical element to you know, being able to have horse and carts that would maneuver around here i'm not as i say i'm not quite set on this it does leave some questions in my own mind but i just feel like mm, well let, let me try let me try this what if we have the road coming in here and then it sort of curves in like this Because the main thing is it just needs to get to this road to avoid the cranes. And then we do... In which case I might be able to change the... Why can't I... Oh, is that a track? Yeah. That's why I can't raise and lower that spline point because that is not road. Mm. Yeah, and then I get to re-expose the track. Um, hmm. Something along those lines. Some experimentation to be done. But let's get to the part of the show where we texture things, because I think that's going to be a good part of the show. Um... Yeah, I, base, I want to just do, I mean, there's a lot to be, like, I haven't even touched this stuff over here, but let's just get a basic texturing in place, and then that way we can, we could get a general, and the water. We'll get the texture, we'll get the water, and then we'll get to play. I love that we've come to a song that's like, okay, we're getting, we're getting there, we're chugging along, we're getting there. Riverbed texture, kind of standard issue type thing. Um, I may end up, I think I'm going to extend this uh, because we could, you could see that the layout extends out here anyway. So I feel like y extending the track isn't really changing the creative fabric of how this works. And it just gives us a little bit more room for headspace, which maybe I don't want. Maybe I want to limit myself. But because I don't know what I'm getting into, I'm going to put it in there for the time being. I mean, arguably it should... I mean, I do like the idea of it terminating, though. I kind of want to put some kind of ties or something to to show that it ends. I, I've seen what it looks like in my mind, and it's it's becoming more involved, and I think I have to restrain myself so I'm not getting too out there. Um, the green one is Ben Neal. Yeah, the green engine's Ben Neal. Uh, what time period is the wonderful layout set in? Um, this is set in early 1900s, very early 1900s. Um, the engine that we're using, it's a fictional engine, but the fictional build date is 1901. Oh, I could just use... Um, oh, here's an interesting thought. What if rather than just ending the track, what if we had ties? What if it was the, that the track was being expanded to somewhere and it just hasn't been, that hasn't been done yet? I'm not sure if this is going to stay for the final version, but... 
I like this as a sort of concept because it tells us this is a storytelling element. It's something that you look at and you go, oh, there, why, why, is, why are those ties there? I mean, arguably they're too haphazard. They're more, oops. Um, but I don't know, maybe to have them off to the side? I hate when I <laughs> don't get to use the shortcuts I've been trying to. Uh, I don't know. There's something about that that I like. Or maybe it's a line that's been torn out. Uh, maybe they... It, it, there's a lot of stories of these railroads that would build a spur to some place, find out it was unprofitable, and then two years later rip it up. So maybe they built a spur that wasn't profitable to, to you know, zinc mine or something. I don't know. This is why... There's so much potential when you're doing freelance modeling to just say, what do I want the story to be here? And you just invent it. And nobody can tell you you're wrong because you made it up. And that is fun. So I'm going to put a riverbed here. Which, if you were doing a quarry, kind of has an interesting look in its own right. Sort of a la Panama Canal construction. Uh, track construction scene with workers. Um, the That spur was designed to lead into a fiddle yard. Actually, uh, no, Ricardo. The, the layout's design, as intended, was to have a cassette coming off of this high line here. He never illustrated anything coming off of that spur. So, I mean, you could... But that isn't what was initially envisioned for it. Um, I definitely want to put this building on stilts. Uh, in the long run. Can I find something that pretty quickly uh, wharf? Uh, RC Wharf Spine. Speaking of Rico, thank you for making this asset that I'm just about to use. To the guy that I was just talking to. Uh, serendipitous timing. That is exactly what I wanted. Because then I can lower its height to about... No, I can't lower its height. One of the things I don't like about Trainsy, I have to open this tab to be able to use the shortcut to then adjust the height. You would think that I could just, oh, I don't know, say press H and it would open the tab automatically. Maybe somebody will say, oh, um, the uh, Surveyor 2 does that or something like that. Which is great for Surveyor 2, but I don't have Surveyor 2. Oh, this building has a foundation. Hmm, interesting. That could affect things a, a itty bitty bit. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave it for now. It may not actually affect anything at all because truth be told, Hold. You can't really see, well, you can kind of see the foundation, but once we put the water, it might just not be as noticeable. Uh, we're going to leave this for the time being because I do want this to progress. And I'm going to change the height of it here. I should probably change it to 6.11 so I don't have Z fighting. Um, that way I've got the right end, and it lines up nicely, and it looks like that. Yes, that is a thing. That is a thing. You came for words of wisdom? That is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, now let's get to, uh, let's move the schooner out of the way, because I'm going to be messing with the terrain, and this is going to be, require a little bit of playing around. So, we get to lower this down, we get a l I think we're going to need to do some kind of extension of the wharf to include the sidewalk, but for today, um, I think we're going to hold off on that for the moment. We'll get back to that part of the show. Um, 
Because that, that's going to be some more detailing, and... I mean, we made good progress, but... Man, oh man, this, uh... I knew this would be a build. I, I, I knew this would be a build, but this is, uh... This is even more rewarding than I thought it would be. Like, not gonna lie, like, the, the Sandy Fork Log uh, Logging Company, I, it was worth giving it a try, but I admit that I was kind of underwhelmed with how it runs. I mean, aside from the, the train Z limitations of, um, of being able to do terrain and kind of, uh, with significantly different elevations, that was a limiting factor but also that upper section with the switchbacks where you could only fit two cars just kind of boggled my mind it, i just didn't sit right with me so i might get back to that eventually but i'll admit that it is probably not going to be until surveyor 2 fixes that probably something i'm not going to work out for the time being oh dear uh, i'll get those comments um Okay, anyway, uh, back to the show. Um, point is that, you know, it, it wasn't quite what I thought it would be. This is even more than I thought it would be. And I had very high hopes and expectations for it. Uh, I definitely wanted it to be something exciting, and my goodness, is it exciting. Um... Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do... There's a lot we're going to have to do on that side of the layout. Um, so in a way, it might not be a bad thing that playtime's short. Because I feel like, usually with these lights, I at least get texture shot. But that is still looking very much like I just bought a bunch of kits and built them and placed them on top of the layout. Um, so, oh, that's perfect. I like where that cut... Well, quite cut off where it needs to and he said yeah but that'll work for now it's gonna need to be refined once i do the add the tables and stuff but yep that's what i want i think i wanted a bit higher though just because i wanted to look deep enough that that schooner would actually fit through uh yes i will not i will darken it so it's not so comically bright blue mm. Mm, that's nice although i think it probably should be water just to suggest that it's deeper that's gonna be some fun for next week as far as trying to get that um the terrain figured out for that sort of in between well actually no hold on it's not gonna be so hard that's actually pretty easy because we could take this i think well he says this optimistically he says this probably too optimistically when he's talking to the third person it could be either successful or unsuccessful but uh, if we straighten this out yes i had reason to be optimistic cool i like having reasons to be optimistic that way yeah i like that that is our coal trestle uh does it need some refinement absolutely but it is good enough for today because as it is, we've we are really cutting into playtime, but that's okay. Um, oh, darkening the water. We're gonna go into um, adding and removing scenery. Um, or no, not adding the environment. Um, go place a point there. We just go boom to boom to boom. Although, I mean, I don't know if it'd be, well, yeah, I guess it'd be like that. I'm satisfied with that for now. I will worry more about that another time. And now we can bring the big sh uh, the big schooner back in, raise it from the deep. Uh, the water line should probably be about there seems about right yep cool we all good at that great and then really bringing it on the sides ah 
Like, that feels good. That just feels good. Let's get some PBR dirt in here. I want some kind of, yeah, like soil texture like that. Rocky and junky, messy kind of vibe. Then we'll maybe have bits of grass and that kind of thing, but we are largely going for... This is a good base to work with. And then we'll add some more variety to that in a moment. And we'll just get to here. I think that's it. Because I like that as a base color. Um, it does make me think we'll want some highlights. Actually, yeah, like that kind of highlight, that type of thing, a bit. Um, but I don't know. There's there's a lot of experimenting and playing around to be done with this. But it will work for tonight. Now, the bridge. Because I do want to get playing, but I also want the bridge to look... I want to get the bridge in there. I want the bridge looking nice. So let us get the right... Oh, that's a 7.7 .7 elevation. Uh, so... Oh. 7. And we apply that hit here and here. And then we move it into position here. And it's actually kind of convenient because the narrow gauge rails just look like the guard rails. Or the check rails, depending on what terminology you use. And then... Oops. Uh, no, I want to get the bridge. Does it do... Nope, not the rails. Questions does oh it does curve. Goody. Getting it to curve and look right is gonna be a bit more of a challenge. But let's see if we can Nope, not that. Nope. Uh, I know how to do that. We'll straighten it here. Oh, I can't straighten it because it's a bridge, right? Hmm. Gonna need to play around with that. There are some unanswered... Because, yeah, one of the things I'm not a fan of in Train Z is that I can't use the straighten track tool on something considered a bridge. Which means that I should approach the problem from a different perspective. Rather than having it go like that, why not just use two different bridge sections? This, to me, feels better. Or even three. But something's off with the way that track's looking. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So if I have the bridge here, it needs to close up by here. And then... Um, can I delete that? No, because that's two different types of track. But I do need those check rails. Unless I put um, SG100 ties. Oh, I don't have that one. I'll need to grab that. Only take a second. At least there I know what I'm looking for. Uh. Yeah. Interesting challenges that one comes up with in the process. That, uh, oh. Hmm. I thought that would be easier to find than it is proving to be. Well, in that spirit, then, uh, that's what I wanted. There it is. Nope, not that. No ballast. I think what I actually might end up doing, because that looks really hooey. Eh, 
Why am I getting it to look so odd there? Yeah, I'll move that bridge out of the way. This is where... Like, oh, because it connected to the... Right. Um, well, let's fix that. Challenge of having so many spline points of a similar type and the such a close proximity to one another. You're just left going, wow, this is all really messy. But I think here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just smooth that curve out by way of doing it this way. And I might change what that looks like later, but the keyword in that statement is later. Um, gorgeous thing. Oh, thank you, Kevin. I'm glad that you're you're liking how it's coming together. Um, Brian Strait, you've uh, found my channel and you enjoyed it. So glad to hear that. Uh, it's I love. If there's two things I love, I love trains and I love creating videos. Bring those two things together, and. I'm going to be having a good time, and I hope that you are as well. Might have to adapt this later. But for the time being, we're going to go with that. And then, just so that we have something in place. It doesn't quite work because we don't have the terrain underneath it, but I am going to try to put earth under here just so we have a little bit of a backdrop and we'll go like so i mean we still have a bit of hovering track but at least it doesn't look insane yeah i mean i do like this bridge but i think that it's just a little too it's too short and those ends are putting it over the well, actually, the ends aren't putting it over the thing, but that curve is really going to be a question mark. Unless I kind of cheat and I push this curve out, which I could, I'm not... I might do that. But for tonight, this is the bridge we're going with. Uh, I'm going to lower the terrain around this just so that we have a bit of water going underneath. By no means will it be all of the water but it will be just enough that we've got something there um there we are just so it continues on in a fashion and then let us just take this soil texture and we're gonna just kind of plop it all around here which is too much but Again, just trying to get things covered up for now. And then next week we'll go in and we'll super detail and so forth. Um, last thing, I'll, I'm going to move those buildings out of the way. Just because this side's a mess. We can't help that. Um, I mean, we could, but more work than it's worth. But that way we could look at this side and we could say, this is good enough. Um at some point, we'll need to replace those switch stands, too. But I don't... I, I feel like I'm going to need to look up what is a prototypical switch stand for the era. That feels like a thing that is going to take time. And I might just also make some invisible switch stands. But we will leave the switch stands in for now. We will just try to get them a little bit more out of the way. We'll get things lined toward the main so that we don't find ourselves going down the wrong way. Um, so before we start placing stock in there, what do you guys think? I am pretty happy with that. And I hope you are too. But I'm really... Uh, Happy. let's see um looks better not having a bridge that has curvy wood members yeah agreed uh put track road and scenery objects in different layers yeah i mean in the long run i i would be putting them in different layers just for quick ease of construction just doing it this way because i'm not even set on that as the final bridge i am tempted to do that more or ornate um design i just but then I, 
Do I just want to reline the track? Darn it, I just want to reline the track now. I just want to do it. That is just the thing I want to do. Sometimes you just know you want to do a thing, and so you just do the thing you want to do. That thing being, we are going to take this track. We're going to take the straight section and have it go all the way over here. Um, while trying to maintain... Well, let's get the bridge where it's supposed to go. So if the bridge ends up here... Then we can put that there. Now we need to have the curve a bit smoother. It actually didn't change things as much as I thought it would. I mean, it's still really tight. But... Yeah, we need to pull that out a bit. Like so. And that definitely work looks weird with that. But... If I, if I don't stop now, I'm just not going to stop. So, there we go. That looks right. There we are. That looks right. I might still replace it with that other bridge, but at least I can live with that for, for the sake of the play session. So, um, this is what we're going <laughs> to... I'm going to force myself to say that's good enough for tonight. Um... Which means we're going to get have a little bit of time to play around with this. Um, I'm not going to do any elaborate switching because I feel like we have this whole other side of the layout that just hasn't been touched at all. And it's going to look really odd just playing through. But I'm going to set ourselves up to... Um, we're going to switch the ore. We're going to bring in some limestone. Swap some limestone cars out here. Um, and we will definitely have some fun at the docks so let us do what we should have done probably an hour and a half ago and kept doing and save this um and of course it changed the watercolor because why trains thought that the watercolor should change with sessions i will not understand anytime soon but here we are um That, that has me really, really happy. Um, the only thing I want to do now, I, well, I'm thinking I want to change the switch point radii so that I'm not having to back super far away from any switches. It's a train Z thing, if, if those of you, and I apologize for those of you who are model railroaders, and, and you're like, what, what is all this technical jargon because I talk about train Z stuff because I'm just familiar with it. Try not to, I, I, I try not to lose you in the shuffle. Um, basically, just need to make sure that the switches will work properly when it comes uh, time to play around with this. So, now that we've done that, we can resave the route. And then we will get ourselves set up. Now, what's kind of interesting is there's sort of two ways you can run it. Because we've got this engine house here, which you could make an industry if you wanted to. Um... But today we'll play it as an engine house. So, time to bring out Buttercup. And we're going to bring out Buttercup in her as-built condition. So, uh, Buttercup is an 042 oscillating cylinder uh, Forney style engine. Uh, the set from Trains Forge, uh, where you can buy this, comes with two versions, the original and the rebuilt, and you can see the primary difference between those two are the headlights, but uh, the rebuilt also has the tanks on the side. But we're going to go original, because I love the cap stack, and that just looks really cute. Buttercup really is an appropriate name for that engine. So we're going to stage her here. And what do I want to do? Um, although I suppose technically it's easier to go the other way because then I have to move the cars on, on and off. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do it that way next time. Today we'll stage the train. We'll bring it into the scene. And depending on how the switching goes, we may either take cars out or we may just leave them and 
do that for the next time. Uh, we have some... Pro we actually have a Drover Caboose. This is Freeware on Trains Forge. Um, which, that's a pretty car. We are going to have a couple of hoppers in the mix. These are going to have loaded limestone cars. Or, uh, loads of limestone. We'll put three in the mix. And we'll load them up with limestone. And that's going to go to the trestle where they'll be unloaded onto a ship. We actually have a UR and boxcar, which will... So I want to switch mainly what's in the scene. So I kind of want to say, let's take... And I want some flat cars. So we're going to take the box car to this industry that hasn't been described yet. And let's get some flat cars. Um, which I also want to say Pencil42 has done some. Um, if not, Trainboy1 has also done some good ones. Um, flat car, 22 Oh, those are, those are narrow gauge ones. Uh, let's see what we've got from Pencil 42. I don't have any of the supply cars. Well, then. That's, and then I just need to change the author. Uh, pencil 42. Okay. And... A, B, and A, 36 footer. Uh, yes, that'll work. Yeah, and I know where I could get some more flat cars for next time, but that'll just get us up and running. There we are. Yeah, that'll do the trick. So this is a lumber hauling railroad, so we're going to say we've got a couple of cars here that have been unloaded, and we're going to put a couple of loaded cars in the train. And I think that'll be good enough for tonight, because we don't have tons of time. That'll be a good start to things. And arguably more than this engine could haul anyway. Um, I'm almost inclined to shorten it. But let's go with it just because. Seems like fun. Uh, let's see. Lumber stack, camp goods. Uh, what does that look like? Hmm, maybe a bit. Not quite what I was looking for. Um, okay, well just so we have something that looks nice, we will put some logs. Even though I think it's unlikely that the timber would be hauled out en masse, but then we have a load. Let's get to it. And I'm going to turn that down so that you guys could still hear me. And we'll turn the music up, so you can still hear that. And there we go. Well, switch tracks. That's more at least really building track anyway.
So, that is a nice view. And again, this is a view that you can have by virtue of the fact that this is right on the edge of the layout. So it really lends itself to actually having this specific viewpoint. Super steep grades, so you're talking short chain trains. Uh, let's see. We'll bring her into the station for a quick pass, uh, stop. Actually, we might leave the caboose there. We'll leave the caboose there, and then we'll take our... Uh, limestone cars up to be emptied. I'd meant to put full ones there or uh, empty ones there to come back, but yeah, we'll get the point with just a single trip as it is. And this is where you can see up close why it's an oscillating cylinder. Isn't that a cool detail? Mike did such a great job on these models. So, next month, this is going to be a really fun scene to detail. But for this month, we will uh, just kind of accept that it is a work in progress. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I feel like we've overcome a couple of the really major um, roadblocks when it comes to how to implement this layout. Um... We are, we're making good progress on this. And we can start to see more of the scenes that are really going to come alive. And again, I try not to, like, I mean, I love scenes like this, but admittedly, unless you put your cell phone on the layout, you're not going to get quite a view like this. But even from afar, it just looks like you have so much going on, and... We're going to super detail this. We're going to put people in here, some horses and carts. It's not going to look this empty. But hopefully that you're seeing where this is going. I think this is going to really lend itself nicely to, um, to super detailing next month. Uh, yep, we set that one back. And just the ship itself. So the reason in the description for this... Wow, this is another really loud piece. Um, so in the description, the reason why I said um, that this is an opportunity to kind of... Oops, going a bit fast there. Um, a, a chance to combine hobbies is that it was evident from the way some people were posting on forums that they were ship enthusiasts. And I think that if you like shipbuilding, this is a great way to be able to combine your love of model railroading with your love of shipbuilding. Or maybe you have one hobby and your wife has another, or you just have a friend who has another. There's so much that you could do when you combine forces. Um... And I'm sure one could buy a nice ship that fits there too, but simply to say that it really benefits from having a showpiece. I mean, we'll have fun with the layout and make the ship kind of blend in more. Because right now it's like, here is the ship, and then there's nothing about beyond that. But it gives us a starting point. So we'll spot these cars to be unloaded. Don't want to get too close to the edge or trains you'll think I, I derailed. So we'll just leave them there. They're at least on the flat part. I, you know, this is this is the view that you get. You know, I wasn't sure if I'd like the, having it or not. Um, but I think if we put, you know, you could have some kind of barge. And what I'll probably end up doing with the ships 
is putting them on separate layers so that you can toggle them on and off. So if you want a ship uh, position or a barge position below to unload the limestone onto, you have it. And if you don't, uh, if you want it to be um, unoccupied as it is right now, then you can go that way too. While we're going down, since we're going through the, the sort of less scenic area, we'll, we'll take a moment to sort of really appreciate the uh, fine attention to detail that Mike's put in on this engine. Because it's, A, super cute, and I just love those oscillating cylinders. That it, I never knew that was a thing, but there were some engines... Uh, some locomotives built that had them. I think they were more uh, common in uh, mining railroads. Or not mining, logging. Which is fitting because this is something of a logging railroad. The Umpqua River Railroad and Navigation. I love that as a name too. I'm sure Mike can chime in and explain why, how he came up with that name. Um, maybe it's based on a real place out in Oregon. I'm not sure. So next up, uh, we're going to... Well, we need to swap out the log cars and we need to spot that box car. Fortunately, I put the box car exactly where I want it. So we're going to throw the switch. We're just going to take the caboose with us because... Saves us a move. Um, then we'll go around the log cars. Because the log cars will need to be on the other side anyway. But yeah, I think that it is worth... So the one particular change we're making to this design is it is absolutely worth, in my opinion, having... Um, oops. Oops. Need to grab that box car. But I think it is worth making this side of the layout viewable. Now you do get into the fact that, well, then you don't have the ability to create a backdrop here. And I'd say you could make a backdrop that you could temporarily put in for uh, opportunities when you want to have... Um, for for when you want to take photos, but I just think that it it's it's too difficult to access staging if you don't have that in there. I think you really want to be able to access the staging, and I think that there's and we'll explore this more next week. There, my god, I can't stop saying week. Sorry, guys. Don't mean to confuse you. Month. Next month. We will try to see what we can do with this. That's going to give it a feel like it's a scene of its own. And make it really feel cohesive with this harbor. So what do you guys think of this? You're you're up for seeing the the part two finishing construction on this next month. Um, would love to know what your thoughts are. If if you've taken anything, especially if you've taken anything away from this that you feel like you could apply to your own model railroading, I'd really love to know if you're getting ideas from this because obviously everybody's building something slightly different. This is very much talking about how you make use of a four by eight. Hashtag don't hate the 4 by 8 um, It's talking about Seaside, and that that is a very specific sub-niche of modeling. But I hope that it, there's stuff in this plan that, again, you could completely change the era and have it and have different ships and different scenes. You could expand upon it. There, There's how you mix high and low space like we were talking about with the houses earlier so there's a lot of, that you could do when it comes to how you 
you take ideas from this and apply it to whatever era or area of the country that you're you're working on. Ah, Mike's chimed in. Uh, name came about when I thought of the location, the head of the Umpqua River, and the nature of its purpose, which the earliest days was to ship limestone from the Oregon coast loaded onto ships that sailed up to Portland. There we go. See, this is also um, switching topics. This is why I wouldn't want to put it at eye level and not have it be visible from the back. Because at eye level, we can't see all of this wonderful scene here unless we come over here and then you still have this track that's kind of blocking your view this to me is going to be the way to really appreciate this part of the scene as well as being able to access the train and uncouple and uncouple cars because otherwise if you block off your staging you can't really do anything switching wise with it and then it begs the question well why do you even have the passage siding unless you're using it to pass trains which you can i mean you could stage it so that you've got one train that's doing switching here ready to go and then another train is, is switching the limestone and then one passes the other it can be done but this really is a one person layout i think that you'd have to expand it a bit more if you were going to or one crew, I think you'd really have to expand it if you were going to try to fit more than one or just really coordinate your moves well. Because it is possible, but it would take some efforts. Ugh, I got to change that water. Why does trains keep changing the water on me? This is not what I want. Oh, and I definitely don't want that. Back we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But I, I, and this also, too, it gives you a sense, way of thinking of how you use the 4x8 in a foreground, background kind of way. Because if you, I mean, yes, in, in the sim, we could just come up right here and, oh my gosh, that's a great scene. And it really is. Um, but when it comes to where the the edge of the layout is, it's actually here. So you can't get up close to your train there which you don't need to. I think you could get away with a remote coupler for this here. Um, I mean, you could reach it from this side too. Good rule of thumb is never have anything two feet beyond you. So you could reach it from this side, but you could also probably put an uncoupler there and that wouldn't be too hard. But just being able to view it as well. E so even the point I was making is that even if you're viewing it from all the way over here, if you've got four down foreground detail it's going to make you feel alive this is also one as well where i would say that you should really put environmental sounds playing on a speaker the sea and harbor and horn the foghorn and people running around i think that that would add a lot excuse me it would add a lot as far as the the feeling that there's movement, even where obviously your people figures can't move around, your horses and carts can't move around. But if you have that sound in the mix, it's going to really give the illusion that it's alive. Okay, so we have the caboose, but we have to dump it anyway because... Um, where do I want to dump it? Well, we've got these tracks that we actually we've got two tra passing tracks here so i'm gonna put the caboose here yep i'm gonna stow it right over here and then we'll grab those uh log cars and switch those out it is kind of amusing to me how much that caboose uh dwarfs buttercup it's really cute though really quite cute And that's the kind of whistle that I want to be hearing. If, I, if I'm if i by the sea, that's that's my kind of whistle right there. All right, so we're going to show it there. Uh, we've gone beyond 10, so do I want to take the cars back up the line? Yeah, sure. So we're going to grab these empty flats. 
which uh, actually means I should probably push the caboose all the way to the end so that when I grab the flats, yeah, efficiency. And of course, this is right in the foreground, so really being able to appreciate what model you're using. Um, I think in terms of using stuff that's readily available, ready to run, you've got the Bachman Richmond Pacifics that would look really nice. The four or Pacifics, Americans, the four four O's that you could use, um, that would lend themselves well. Uh, you could use climaxes, shays. I think honestly, logging engines, even if you're not doing logging track would fit nicely because uh especially like a class a climax the really boxy ones because you want in a way you don't have a long mainline run and you don't as built have a circuit so being able to um being able to extend your run by having some sort of motive power that's prototypically slow might be the way to go. Let's go in the cab for this part. Oh, I, I could listen to that whistle all day. This is where I love train simming. I, as much as I love model rarity, to be able to get views like this is absolutely fantastic. And we'll just go dockside. So we'll go. We're going to pick up these flat cars. The other thing that I'm thinking about as well is the fact that with an engine like this, prototypically you wouldn't have a super long train, so it lends itself to doing multiple runs. I think that with a switching layout, it's beneficial if you don't have the feeling like you could switch every single industry in a single go. So the idea that you know, you wouldn't necessarily switch the, the limestone trestle every single time. Or maybe there's a dedicated train for that. So you have a dedicated train for the limestone trestle. You have a dedicated train for other traffic. Um, maybe even a, pa a dedicated passenger train. Allows you to get more replay value. So even if you're not running these trains at the same time, you could still, you could run one. You could run a passenger train, be done with that pretty quickly, and then you could run a freight, uh, your limestone train, then you could run your your uh, dockside switcher. Maybe you have, maybe you do want to run two trains, in which case you have a dedicated dockside switcher here. So the engine shed is where the dockside switcher stays. It only works cars here, so all it's doing is just. Um, it's staging those cars ready to go on these tracks. So that local comes in, drops off a bunch, picks up a bunch, and then takes off. That could be a way to get two-person operations in there. And this is the kind of stuff that you get when you have, uh, get to think about when you play with it. And you can actually kind of see how long it takes to do certain tasks. And you can think about, well, do I want to just have one train come in and do a lot or do i want to be cycling trains through is are there opportunities to have multiple trains running because i do think that there is something to be said for being able to have even just two trains so that way if you have a friend over that feeling that you get when you're watching another train doing work that you're not in control of uh it adds to the realism for sure Now, last 
but not least, we're going to go back, fetch those loaded logging cars, and then we'll bring them over here and deposit them. And just for a change of pace, we're going to put them on this track here just because good way of trusting all of our track and making sure that it works. Now, granted, again, we're talking tight curves. We're talking this little uh, 042 for motive power. So we're not getting into super picky territory as far as track geometry is concerned, but it works. still worth making sure that everything looks right and functions right because this track's pretty well set this isn't going to change much I, i'll probably be playing more with this upper line um maybe in between streams i, I don't know and since i know that i want to be streaming this next month hey i said month uh that might be what i do but hopefully this proves uh at least what we've done today oh whoops runs away um that the, the lolita and mad river as a layout concept is possible um you may have some shortcomings to work around like how you couple cars on extremely tight turns um but it would be a feasible project as a four by eight i would love to see somebody bring it to fruition as an actual physical layout someday because I think that it it's it's really unique. You just don't see you don't see this era model that often. You don't see um, seaside scenes like this model that often. So I think that there's a lot to it. I think there's a lot to it. I think it it looks. It's a really fun design. And we'll definitely be doing more from Ian Rice uh, in the future of, of his plans. Because I think that he's really good about coming up with designs where there's stuff to do. I mean, and obviously here, there's a ton of switching opportunities. And I also like that it, as a 4x8 you could get your basic scenery done relatively quickly and then you could just really go to town on the fine details and and really being able to place people figures and scenes like we look at this wonderful schooner model and you see all the the crew working on the on the ship this guy's climbing the rigging i mean that that's the kind of stuff that you could get into with model rarity and just have an awesome time with I hope I have enough room to actually fit those two cars with me. I think I do. Optimistic thinking here. Ron, I have found that model railroad layouts are more fun for rail sims than routes that duplicate one to one. Um, yeah, I've moved in that direction. So I do like... Uh, I, I've always liked big routes in train simulators. Um, ten years ago, I was very big into multiplayer, where we would run Microsoft Train Simulator and communicate via TeamSpeak, pretending that you could see the other train, but keeping our communications very prototypical. No idle chat. It was all... You'd listen to it, and you'd think you were listening to a prototypical railroad. And I'd be running a train anywhere from three to four hours to maybe six hours um and i enjoyed that but where i'm at in life now i like having the bite-sized action i like that i could switch cars out and we've been doing this for about 30 minutes as opposed to an hour and a half every time you'd have to charge your air up and so forth i like the feeling that i'm getting enough of the experience in but not so much that i'm getting bored with it um and real railroading does absolute oh wrong switch um real railroading does absolutely have its times of boredom um so something since quite a few of you have stuck around for the entire d of three hours um and i want to reward you for your uh for watching for so long um something i'm going to tell you about is i You'll recall that back in June, 
we looked at a one to mo one scale representation of the Tumblr Ridge line of BC Rail and used it to get ideas for building a model railroad. Well, uh, this month I've been working on that layout. I started it on October 1st and I've been building that. I'm not going to live stream it because it's a massive undertaking. It's probably going to take a couple of more months. And I just don't think that there's enough excitement and interest in the construction of it to warrant live streaming it. Although we'll definitely live stream the play of it when we, oops, when we get to that part of the show. But, um, that is something that I'm working on. It's going to be, it's an end scale, 40 foot by 20 foot double decker layout. It's, so that's going to be some months away from completion. It's going to have at least one feature that I promise you've never seen done on any train Z layout ever. And you're going to see that and you're going to go, that is, that is really fun. And that helps give it a model railroad flair. I don't want to spoil what it is because I'm really happy with how with the idea of it and you'll see it again hopefully in a few months or so oh i need to run around those cars never mind um but just to say bc rail tumblr ridge is something that i'm working on and something i look forward to sharing with you in a few months uh, and the spam bot needs to get blocked again as these things go Miniature Wonderland has found a way for boats to move and unload unloaded cargo. Can we have that in Train Z? Uh, well, certainly it could be done in Train Z. Some people already have. Um, some people have even figured out how to make car ferries work. Um, I can't say I, 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 I haven't explored that yet. But I like the idea of being able to have a car ferry that could go from one place to another. Um, so yes, I could put an invisible, so the way to do it in Trainsy is placing an invisible track, and then there are drivable boat models that can then follow that track. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that for this layout, just because there's, there's not enough, <sighs> well, I say that, and then I think about how cool it would be to some, to see a boat moving down that waterway, so I might, yeah, I might do that. Fair enough. I'll put an invisible track. I, I have to find a boat model that's going to look good doing that. But yes. Because some of the drivable boat models look better than others. You can tell that using this engine isn't just for show. It, it You really do need that type of ability to, to make really tight turns. Because these are sharp i i would also dare to say that if you were to build this you would probably have to be comfortable building custom turnouts because i'm not convinced unless you expand it if you make it maybe a five by ten then maybe you could fit uh you'd have wider curves and then you could maybe fit pre-existing turnouts but my god that seems awfully tight All right, we've picked up those cars. Um, the lobster smack on Transforged might fit. I animated along a path that's not too broad. Um, yeah, I'll take a look at that. And honestly, Mike, it, maybe we could make an, a version of it specific to this route. And then it could just kind of... Well, the thing is... It, well, yeah, in the case of the lobster smack, um, it's if it could fit under the bridge then it could foreseeably start here and then have a path in which it goes all the way out. Now, I do envision doing this as a train Z layout in which the world ends here, So, but maybe it just makes a kind of an in-place turn and then it heads back on both sides. Maybe something along those lines. Food for thought. Alrighty. 
gonna get our switches make sure everything's set we'll go back to the station we'll do a station stop there then we'll uh we'll exit the world and we'll call it a night this is this has made me really happy this i you know, I'm always cautious to say, oh, this is the one I was the most excited for. I mean, I was pretty excited for uh, for quite some of the other ones that we've done in the past. But this is one that I I can't lie. I've been eager about this for the past three weeks. Maybe it was only, yeah, two and a half, three weeks thereabouts. But I now that I'm seeing it come to life, this oh, now I'm gonna have to resist not doing much to it between now and a, a month from now. I mean, I might clean like do some boring things like try to clean up splines or that type of jazz, but um, maybe figure out what I want to do as far as this bridge is concerned. But I don't want to get into the scenic stuff involving this side because I want you to to see how that evolves. So I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to restrain myself from doing that. But I think this is... This is... This is a very, very fun little layout. I think that this is one that... I hope that once it becomes available for you to download and enjoy... Um, that... Well, that you'll download and enjoy it. Um... Because there's a lot of play. I see a lot of play value with this. I think this really holds up to repeat play. I think you could do so much as far as different trains are concerned. You could have a lot of, um, you could have, you've the cassette, so different trains could come in and come out. You could expand on it. Um, this is, this is a fun one. Um, once again, I thank you guys uh, before we depart the station here. Thanks for supporting me uh, just by watching the stream, uh, whether you've been watching for 30 minutes or, or the full time. I It's great to have you along for the ride. I, I pre, it's, it's a comfort knowing that I fire up the camera and I've got you guys to join me. So I really appreciate that. Uh, and I especially appreciate those of you who support me on Patreon whether you're doing it because of the podcast, because you're doing it of the streams, means a, a very much to me. Um, and if you're not, again, just even a dollar a month, uh, you're getting early access to the routes that we're building here. Uh, $5 a month, you get early access to podcast episodes. So uh, if, if you're able to support me on Patreon, that's great. If not, just share these live streams, uh, share the... Um, Share the website, greattrainlayouts.com. Uh, or if you think that you'd benefit from having me take a look at a track plan and uh, applying the Great Train Layouts live treatment to it where we take the track plan and we come up with scenery for it, or even designing a track plan from scratch, let me know. I'm available to do commission work. You can read all about that on greattrainlayouts.com. I think it is time to depart. I feel like I'm going to have to cheat and allow myself this building here. Unless I can find something else with the stacks. Because I like how we get to look between the buildings here on the corner. And it's also nice to have an industrial building that's not serviced by rail. I think that adds a bit of variety. Um, so yeah, we're going to cheat. But it's a corner. It, it's a very minor cheating. <laughs> Um, and this, see, I mean, yeah, right now it looks really kind of fit and precarious, but you can see that once we get the rock wall in place and we do some spline magic to get the groundwork looking good, um, this is going to look really sharp. Oh, good thing I thought of that. Hopefully you've enjoyed being introduced to Buttercup. Again, 
trains uh, forge uh mike created this uh such a cute little critter and uh, really fits in well with the switching layout like this really works well for those super tight turns going across the bridge Yeah, I like how that separates from the buildings below. I might still put in a couple of trees just to give it some vegetation. Because I think if we don't have any, that might be a little too bland. And we'll we'll add some more rocks. That might be some of the stuff I do in between the stream. It's just some sprucing up of what we've already done here by adding rocks and things like that. So we can really concentrate on just the other side. But there we have it. We have arrived at the cassette staging area, off-world, uh, so to speak. We'll take one last look at the Lolita and Mad River Railroad, as designed by Ian Rice, a truly legendary model railroad designer whose work we'll be exploring more. Tune in next month where we complete it's so perfect you can see here's the scenery complete on the it's like yin and yang we've got the scenery complete on this side so next month we're going to be completing the scenery uh for the second harbor uh, just adding final touches and really bringing this thing full circle this has been a lot of fun and it's been all the more enjoyable because i've had your company on along the way GreatTrainLayouts.com is where you can see routes available for download, including the Kootenai Lake Navigation Company, which was the first train layout we did on a live stream. That is available for download for you to enjoy. And there are more to come. A lot more to come. There's quite a few that are actually finished and just kind of a matter of testing and so forth. So be sure to check that out. Uh, and then uh, Great Train Layouts on Facebook as well. We post there. When we're about to do live streams or just have some interesting ideas to share, Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me. It's been great to have you along for the ride. Have a good night or whatever time of day you might be watching this. Take care.